Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with Ripper Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And it's now episode 374. In this episode, we're going to speculate on what's next for Steph Curry, preview the second seed versus seven seed matchups in the playoffs, and give our playoff X factors. Fellas, how we doing? We just seen some excellent playing games. Some unfortunate injuries, not the best way to start the plan, but some great basketball nonetheless. We did watch some great basketball. Watched my Lakers move on. Unfortunately, it came at the expense of Zion Williamson missing the last three minutes of the game. We're going to talk about that, obviously. And then the other side of the the 7-8 and eight game, we see one of the game's best, Jimmy Butler, him go down with an injury, but was able to champ it out, play the entire game. Saw Caruso also get injured in that game, did not return. Oh, excuse me, in the in the later game that day, I should he say. He will be playing Friday, though. I believe that. he. It was an ankle injury. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, returned, but then left also, did not return for the rest of the game after that. But, I mean, we watched really good basketball. I would have liked to see my Lakers win while Zion and the Pelicans had gone on that crazy run because once Zion went out, the game completely switched on its head. Jose we got the too. momentum again. Because Jose went out Jose right did that. have that ankle injury also, but he was another one that had that injury, kind of self-inflicted. I say self-inflicted because he kind of ran into the to the, to the the basket awning, but was still able to stay in the game. Obviously wasn't at 100%. But when Zion went out, it was over. He had 40 points. He had just made a nice bucket over Anthony Davis. Y'all text me immediately. Zion is busting 80s ass. You did not lie. And then he goes out with the hamstring injury. That sucked, truthfully. Listen, of course, I want my Lakers to win. does not matter against two. But y'all know that I'm a fan of Zion Williamson. Seeing him ball out in his first taste of any type of playoff basketball, it absolutely sucked to see him go out that way because he was the best player on the court. Do you have water and prime? Yes. Double hydration. Did you know Talk to me. that if you drink a gallon of water a day, that is not enough to hydrate you? How much for, you need? for the sole fact, of, it's not that you need more than that. It's there are certain things in other beverages that give you the electrolytes you need, which is why you drink the Gatorades, which is why you drink the Pedialytes. It's to give you back that that balance. Uh, so interesting. Riv, how was your birthday, brother? Uh, I just went out with my pops. You know, uh, we, where'd you guys go? That's sweet. We went to Texas Row House. All right, definitely got um, the buttered rolls, steak. Oh, uh, I don't really eat steak like that too much. I had some Seafood. shrimp. I you think had... steak is overrated? Um, surprising. I like pepper steak a lot. Now you like meat? Okay. Yeah, I like pepper steak a lot. I just, I'm just not a big steak guy. I wouldn't say overrated. Filet mignon. We're gonna get a kiku on Friday. It's gonna go crazy. Yeah, I, nah. Erotic. I, you know, I ain't really a big steak guy, but you know, Gotta talk do to my the dad and the scallops. That's some fun. Mm. He gave me some good advice. We chopped it up. I saw you tweeted. He was like, hey, nothing about, nothing like going out to, to eat with my pops. Yeah, because, you know, fact, we, we, we like to go out and just reminisce, you know, talk mm-hmm. about the old days and what we used to do and talk about his fan, like his life and then talk a little bit about my future life. I told him one of my goals is to get married, have a family, big house. Yeah. There's nobody in our family is married. So, Interesting. We, yeah, we've never seen a marriage. So, we've never really seen a legit Who's successful be your best man? relationship. So, huh? Who's going to be your best man? I got a few guys up for, uh, Penmanship. Got a few guys. You man. got some good friends, man. Yeah. You're not one of them. I know. Ah. Yeah, nah. Why'd you have to throw that in there? Because I remember one day I asked him who would be his best man, and he just shut me down, man. Well, My best man's locked. Yeah, see? You, well, groomsman. Man. You can be a groomsman for sure. What number am I? <laughs> where, where in line does he fall? <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's usually nah. like high order, so you probably be at the... Be I don't like that shit. Top. That was crazy. So you're very much... That's how they do it. At, at, at I think I'd be in the though. middle, though. Yeah. So you're very much an eye for an eye kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, like, with, like, all, with all due respect, this guy who I've known for almost half my life at this point in time, he's nowhere near my best man. It's, it's Charles. Oh, yeah. I told uh, Charles, uh, he DM'd me. He was like, I know you're mad at me right now. Oh, he's <laughs> real. I told him about and it. And I was like, yeah, I am mad at you, bro. But um, I still love you, man. That's but real. I'm very That's much real. upset at you. So I'll see him when I see him. Uh Rod Wave is better than Rick Ross, bro. Bro, that was hilarious. It's not that, it's not that you think he's better. It's just your tweet was insane, bro. <laughs> it was just like, come Yo, on. Yo, I was getting crucified for that. It's just bullshit. I had to mute it. I had to mute the tweet, bro. It was too one, much. Once, once Terrell went and, and responded at yeah. you, I was just like, yeah, he's in for a rude yeah, awakening. Replies were cr- it was like maybe 20% in my favor, but 80%. You don't like Rick Ross? Me. Or you just don't, you never really. He just never really moved me. Okay. okay. I don't know. I mean, Rick Ross he has some unbelievable features. He hasn't been moved by J. Cole, by Kendrick. I mean, these are some of the greats that you're not you're, you're new school type. Were you a little Wayne guy or no? Uh, he was cool. He was oh, never like my favorite. He was cool. He was cool. <laughs> I 
I like Lil Fucking Wayne. I don't. I wouldn't say I, I go in the car and put on Lil Wayne. So if right you, now if you were to give your Mount Rushmore of artists, my Mount me. like of all time, for you, like have, have like impacted me or like just my <laughs> no, like it has to be impact, impact is different. Impact. I'm putting Chief up there. Uh-huh. I'm putting Fifty up mm-hmm. there. You know who influenced Chief? Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I mean Wayne's, really? Wayne's a legend. Wayne I'm saying me. I'm saying me personally. No Eminem or Mac Miller. Eminem would probably have to be in there. And probably, what do you mean? Oh, nah, nah, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. It would G Herbo and A Boogie. Eminem, the last Eminem two is spots. a top ten rapper nah, all the time. Why'd you say that? Eminem what do you nuts. mean? You said that for one reason. <laughs> Mac one reason Miller only. and Eminem. Come on, come on. Eminem, Eminem is essentially, <laughs> he's let into the black community. Well, who else we got? What? Eminem is the what? He's a sen- he's essentially been let into the black community. Oh, okay. Did you know that? Nah. News to you. <laughs> you think that's not cap? That's I'm not, not cap. I'm not. That's not cap. I just I don't know a lot of black people that listen Eminem. Not M- no nah, more. People used to run Eminem OD. He was elite back in the day. I think Rick Ross amazing at features. No, he's but one of the more. But bro, you, you, quoted, you quoted my my tweet and gave me two songs where it's him and it's like two other artists. No, but well, he Drake. made those songs, you know? Huh? Drake. Drake. Yeah. yeah. Both some other pack. The girl. I forgot her name. I went through his Just catalog. Rick Ross is actually he has like 17 songs on every album. 14 features are the 17 songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not gonna lie. There's, there's, no, the there's no. There's no. I I think Rod Wave is good. There's no song that Rod Wave has made that Percept can Michelle. top Thug Cry. And Thug Cry is not even Rick Ross's be- best song. Jeff Long Dawn's one of his best albums. Aston Martin Martin's music is arguably one of like the best no, hip-hop songs I said that to Dallas. He has fucking Drake on it. Have you listened to it? I have. No, but his verse was tough. Now, that's not like brother, Drake just backed the carry. Brother got, they, got it a good verse. Good scheming, I'm sorry. On no, Stay Scheming, he carried. Come on. Let's go, yeah, Ricky. But Aston Martin, on, Rick Ross was like, I'm here with you. Like, wait, come on. He's a Scotty Pippen, you know? And Rick Nothing Ross is that. a boss. Nothing wrong with that. You know he owns Rod Wingstop. Rod Wave's Michael Jordan. He has a lot of shares in Wingstop. Rick Ross. Yeah, he does. He owns a, a ton. No, nah, Rick Ross is like one is of Michael the richest Jordan? rappers. Huh? He's a Rod businessman. Rod Wave man. is Michael Jordan? I'm just saying he does it's all his shit by himself. Michael Jordan. Huh? It's disrespectful to Michael Jordan. Okay, Michael Jordan is like not Glenn a good Davis. comp. That's an awful comp. Mm. Rod Wave hold is on, like... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like Sean it's so, he's Anthony someone Edwards? who does it by himself. He does, he's not a big feature guy. He's rarely on features. He doesn't have a lot of features on his song. So I'm thinking of someone who's solo kind of carries. He sings a lot though, right? I don't think singers are LeBron? big, uh, except Chris Brown. Uh, yeah, maybe like 2024 <laughs> Steph. Like there's really not much else on their team, but he's still out there doing his thing. I like that. You know? I feel like the big thing that We're holds Rod Wave back <laughs> is the music that he makes is repetitive. It's beautiful music That's every what time. Helps, help, holds him back. Why does he get his heart broken so much? Every time Rick Rose is like, oh. And y'all never get that's a, that's that a classic. Shit. That's a classic. That's a classic Come start. On. Stop. I'm admin. burning purple flowers. It's burning my chest. He went, Go ahead. He went bar for bar with Lil Wayne on John. You don't remember that? No, nah, that oh, was man. fire. This guy's, he like, went bar for bar with Drake on Lord Knows. That one he got. Feature Gold King. Roses? Like, what are we doing? Feature King. He was. Shout out to him. Loki, you could argue he had one of the best features on My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy too. Shout out. DJ Cal used to call him for a it reason. It was him bro. and Nicki. Yeah, facts. Rick Ross has a classic album. Hey, Teflon Dawn would be his uh, one yeah, of them. I, don't know. I know you don't know. Can you name five songs off it? That's a good question. I can't. Okay, what are we doing? <laughs> I have it in my phone. I don't think I can name it off the top of my head, though. Let's I'm see. not a star. Uh, nah. <laughs> Just stuck there. You know what? I'm going to Pitchfork to see what they have to say about Rick Ross. Because I'll be honest, I've never listened to a full Rick Ross project myself. No, never once. I used to back in the day. Back in way back. It's just a respect thing, though. I think it's like a with oh old, God. old NBA players. You compared them because they were both big. No, because uh, the tweet I originally quoted mm-hmm. was, was saying that Drake had replaced Rick Ross with another big fat black guy, <laughs> and I was like, "That's disrespectful to Rod." Ah, Wolf. got it. All right, listen. Apparently, Teflon Dom's valid. They gave it an eight. I'm, I might have to like. Oh, but they gave Trilla a two point four. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other one that you said? The only one that's up. No, I thought you said another one with Teflon Don. Nope. Okay. All right. That's Shut the only one that up. seems like they were. Oh well, they gave Ash to Ashes a seven point one. They well, gave, what about oh, Rod? They gave Rich Forever an eight point two. Mm. Okay. Let's see Rod. I'm actually interested. They do not like New School. The only one that they used to show respect to was Uzi and Herb. Really, Herb? They respected Herb. They Shout really, out. they All really those. did like. Um, Humble Beast? Humble Beast. They did like it. It was a good album. All right, which one do you want me to go through? Beautiful Mind, Pray for Love, or Ghetto Gospel? Should we just go through all of them? All three, yeah. All right, let's see. All right, they gave Ghetto Gospel an eight. 
it's hard. All right, pray for love. I Yo, I don't think I've never that's actually that. good <laughs> as fuck. They gave pray for love a seven point three. Let's see, beautiful mind. I feel like I remember this review. Yeah, six point nine. Mm. Yo, that's actually decent. Not that Pitchfork's word is God, but like this is definitely, you know this. I definitely give them a lot of respect. Getting an eight from Pitchfork is hard. Rod Ray was a good artist. He is, man. It's just uh, Rick Ross is kind of in a different tier right now. Ah, yeah, a little while. Not as as an artist musically right now, but I'm talking about like historically. Cultural impact. Historically, yes, it's in a different tier. I think Rick Ross is. What's his cultural impact? (laughs) <laughs> he started off with Dream Chasers. I mean, he he, he founded Meek Mill. That's a culture impact. Okay, he Who's he's me? had a lot to do with the culture. Obviously, the the, the old Meek Mill. What not does this, that mean? Not this new guy. <laughs> <laughs> this new guy is on some weird shit. <laughs> if you guys been watching this show, you guys know that we're sponsored by Prospects. You can use that code up top right there. PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. You know what I love about Prospects? Talk and I, I really do love this because I feel like with other... DFS apps or other apps in general, when they give you a free square, that free square oftentimes is only for your first play that you're putting in with prize picks. Even if you signed up, even if you've played before, they got a, a free square for you. The promotions are usually always I was happening. Say weekly, at least I see one. And we do have one right now. It's Nikola Jokic, 0.5 points against oh, the Lakers. That's a steal. On Monday. More or less. I mean, it's a free square for a reason. One might say risk-free investment. <laughs> Riv, how was your uh, entry flopped. you had last? Okay. Flopped. <laughs> flopped. Flopped all weekend. <laughs> Been flopping for four days straight. Um, <laughs> it's not looking good. My hand You're is due. cold right now. But I am due, and You're I'm back due. at it on Friday. I'm, I'm going to figure out what's going to go down. Your bulls play tomorrow. Yeah, I'm locked in. I'm back. We're here. Chirac. Hey, listen, it's not only the play. It's not the playoffs yet. Maybe you're a playoff roster. Yeah, you know, it's definitely it's been hard. You know, it's definitely been tough. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, lock in and get better, you know. So if you guys are interested in using Free Square, you guys can go to the link in our description and click the link and use our code PAS if you're interested. Now, uh, talk, talking about the plan. I actually do have a question for Riv. Uh, yes. I know it was your birthday, yep. and I know the Warriors did lose. Didn't watch it. And you know what? I, I, I'm actually happy that that's what happened. Yeah, went to sleep. Uh, but... What did you? What was the emotions more more so? Were you more happy that the Bulls won, or were you more sad that the Warriors lost? Two like, different. So like, it's two different days. Uh-huh. So what happened was. It's probably good shit about the Bulls. <laughs> actually, I was. I, let me tell you. So what happened was birthday happening. I, was, I always get this weird, funny feeling when I know the Warriors are gonna lose. So that day just felt odd. Like it just. I was going in, and I was like, something's off. I don't feel right. The way they've been warming up, shit look a little funny. So I decided to put in a little play and go to sleep. I, I decided to go to you sleep. You bet against the Warriors? No, no, I bet on I bet on the Warriors. But I'm uh, saying I go to sleep. I want to wake up to either good news, bad news. Woke up at 1.30 in the morning. So I knew some shit was off. Woke up in the middle of the night. I'm like, nah, we had to lose. Because no way I just woke up at 1.30 <laughs> in the morning. Looked at my phone. I saw the game score. I'm like... <laughs> Damn, went on Twitter, saw them destroying the Warriors. Destroying I'm destroying like, Clay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I didn't even realize Clay had zero until I got to Twitter, and I was just like, damn, like they were cooking him. So I went to go look at the box score. He had zero points. He went over for 10. ten. Yeah, Tough that game. was kind of crazy. And then um, the Bulls won. I was just more excited about Kobe White really than anything. Like he was forty two. He on was a balling. F- the best player on the floor with three other All Stars. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely great, man. You lost. Huh? Jews? For Kobe, for sure. For sure, you know. That shocked the shit out of me. 42? 42? Yeah, he, he was cooking. I get the Hawks aren't good. Defensively, they're not good. They just didn't play with 42? no energy. They came out real soft. That really did shock me, too. Trey Young definitely didn't have a good game either. DeJounte tried his best to put his backpack I mean, it on. It shocked you. They're, they're 10 games under 500 for no, a reason. No, I just mean it in the they're sense trash. of... They're actually a better record we, when one of them don't play. Yeah. They, they, the offense just looks better when... In this instance, when Trey was off the floor and was just DeJounte cooking. It just Low key, he was wilding in the first, first half. First half, he had like 22, 24. DeJounte's been in a mode for a while now. Yeah, it's Trey Young also working back from injury. This is, I believe if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the first times he shot without a brace on also. Yeah, he took it off like halftime. So I, I feel like it, it was. It would have been hard for him to ramp up. I understand it's the plan. It is Trey Young. You have expectations. But, I mean, we're asking a lot of Do you Trey. guys think, um, yeah. so the plan... I feel like there should be. I've seen people talk about this too, but you mentioned it. The Hawks are what ten games under five hundred. They were like five or eight games within the eight seed. I feel like there should be some cutoff there. Where Those, if, if you're the like Bulls and if the Hawks you're like had a eight games away from the eight seed, 
Better luck next year. Like, if you're within a couple games, I get that. But if there's that big of a, of a difference, like the West yeah. this year, yeah, valid. Yeah, the yeah. East this year, there was such a big difference yeah. between the 8-9 and nine seed that it feels like, uh, you know, a little, um, I don't know. But to answer your question, I actually wasn't cheaty. mad. I was glad. I'm mm-hmm. sick of this. I've been getting a headache all year. Mm-hmm. My mind is free. Mm-hmm. I can enjoy the play. I got to get from Santos. Energy. All right, go ahead. Open that up. When are we getting this brother hoodie? Oh, I sent it out already. Thank you, Joel. Fucking brother. Love but you, man. Somebody got to do it around You're right. here. You know? <laughs> they got into an I argument. I already think I oh know God. what this is. Dels, 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 bro. Dels. They got into an argument on playback, bro. It really wasn't an it argument. It was so funny no, how no, aggravated. No, 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 Is no, that Jalen Brown? No. Please, God, no. It's definitely JJ. Please, God, no. Are you please. upset? I'm, I'm devastated. Please You're not don't. A fan, bro. No, bro. Ooh. Shit looks kind of mid if you ask me. This shit's clean. Hold up. Green is so plain. You know, I'm so jealous of teams that don't have to change their color schemes or jerseys up much. Me. Well, you guys really don't have to. Worried about Jalen Brown? Come on, bro. The Celtics have I'm never changed about up you. the jerseys. You never needed to. You're a no, curse. Green, black, white. jersey. Going hard. Bro, let, let's do me, let, let me do you guys a favor. Keep that in my house until the playoffs are over. When you guys win, if you guys win, I'll give it back to you. I don't think so. I oh think we'll hold God, on to this. He's fucked. Don't, don't believe in the voodoo, Dells. Come on. It's over. Sure. And you did this on purpose. You messaged, you messaged Santos. I know it. And you were like, nah, Jalen Brown jersey. Get it. I actually didn't tell Santos nothing. Well, I, I felt like someone. Santos asked me a minute ago about getting me a jersey. Uh, this was, I don't know. This was like maybe December or some mm. shit. I was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. He wanted to get me a Jalen Brown jersey. I know it's exactly so you, that. You guys want to do this blindly ranking before we. Hey, Sam, Santos, shout out to you, my brother. Yo, the ADHD that we've kind of had with this podcast so far, I love it. We're just jumping around to different shit. Go ahead. Let's do this blind ranking. You guys want to have a little fun? <laughs> let's do it. Ah. <laughs> let's do it, man. All right. Is here this we go. NBA? Of course. NFL, we'll get to that later in life. This is blind. There's no NFL this whole podcast. Yeah, but I, I can cook up some stuff if I really wanted to. Of course you, know? you could. Um, this is blindly ranking teams from 2010 to 2020. Okay. So that is your cutoff. Think about it for a 2010. split second. All right. Yes. Let's go yes. get so some names. Even, even, even before he names some, we can go off the Doma real quick. We got the Heat. Mm-hmm. We got the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. We got the Thunder. We got the Spurs. I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a so, Grizzlies team. Of course, the Cavaliers, the Warriors. Uh, we already said the Spurs. Uh, the Rockets, Boston's got the Clippers. In the end. Okay. I don't have a okay. single Boston yeah, I didn't team think, on this I didn't think of one. Oh, my apologies. This I just is, want you to know that from the bottom of my heart. Teams. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad, my yes. bad. From the bottom By of my year. heart. Yeah, I'm, no, think, I'm yeah. thinking this is just like what, what as a thinking. whole. Well, maybe yeah. like the 20... Well, nope, we, I'm good. Okay. I'm thinking like the 2010 Warriors. 2010 Lakers are possible. 2010 Lakers are possible. Okay, my bad. Who do you think is the best team out this group? First team up, 2015 Warriors. Okay, I mean... This is number three. Okay, and how many teams do we have? Six, of course. You know the numbers okay. are. Right. You okay. really do love six. I love six. Uh, is he going to give us say four? Is he going to? Is he going to give us five championship teams? I'm. See, that's a good question. That's a good question. I want you to avoid the championship. Who? 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 who You're do just you saying think bar for bar, bar like, for bar, the best for team. Yeah, I'm nuts to say four. Uh, it's Steph. It's Clay. It's Draymond. Yeah, that was him. the first year, and honestly, if the if the Cavs were healthy, they don't win that championship. You're right, but they still made the still, finals. I'm gonna see it. No, it's they were a good team. So let's just go four. I think you got outvoted, buddy. I, I'll go four because Drew's always been saying to follow him. I'll, let, I'll follow him. That's, real. That's real spill right there. We'll go with four. <sighs> Next team up, 2016 Cavs. All right. This has got to be two or three. You could argue one, but I'll go with two because we could still get the 2017 Warriors. Mm-hmm. You will not get the 2017 Okay, this guy's right. spoiling. Well, I'm, I just Come don't on. want to put a, 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 a repeat. obvious... Uh-huh. Well, 2018 know. Warriors, are they here? You're not getting a Kevin Durant team. They so there's no more Warriors. Won. That's the one Warriors this team This is number get. one. Uh, I'm not if against that. If we're not getting they any beat Warriors. They 73 and now Warriors. If we're not getting any Warriors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you guys are inside right. 2016 Cavs. Yeah, number one. Number one, yeah. All right. Hopefully you don't get the heat. 2020 <laughs> Lakers. Just forget about the heat. Yeah, that that team is looking better. Mm, I'll be. Two? I mean, yeah, because we got to think there, there could be some early 2010 teams. Because uh, here we go. Let me not let me yeah. not jump the gun. 2020 Lakers are amazing. I would not be mad at two. But the Spurs teams, that 2014 Spurs team, team was amazing. A big three heat team, also amazing. I, I'm two or three here. I'm If you guys want to agree on two, let's do two. But two or three. I think the 2015 Warriors and the Lakers are debatable. Uh, but 
we already put the Warriors at four. If the I, Warriors was at three, I think we could put the Lakers at four. But since we already put the Warriors at four, twenty twenty Lakers, Lakers at three would probably beat that Warriors team in five six games. How five is truly disrespectful? <laughs> Anthony I, I wasn't Davis, mad at six, but five. What do you is mean, crazy. Draymond Green, DPOY, twenty fifteen, fucking Bogut, respect twenty fifteen. All right, Andrew Bogut was good. He was a good player. I'm cool putting them at three. Yes. So three is the twenty twenty Lakers. Can't forget about KCP Caruso. Ron, playoff Rondo. Andre Goodall was coming off an of All Star appearance. Twenty nineteen Toronto Raptors. So we put we had the Lakers at three, correct? Yes. Okay. We, damn. Th- <laughs> this could be two. This is two. This is two. Uh, it's yeah. I'm just thinking. There's gonna it's just probably a deep be a ass team. team. Yeah. This was twenty fourteen San Antonio I it. Spurs. Yeah, it. Fucked up. It. But this is five by default. It has to be five. It can't be it, six. We have no other. Spot. It can't be the worst. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, you could have argued. Yeah, there's only five, right? No, the six. Oh, didn't hear that. And the last team that you guys are putting is Joel's team that he loves to talk about, the 2012 Oklahoma City Thunder. I thought you were going to say I, the 2018 Rockets. I also thought you were going to say the Rockets. All right, that's fine. You could yeah. easily put them last. They didn't win a championship. Easily. 2012. Did, yeah. He said Thunder? <laughs> he said 2020. Well, you said 2012 Thunder, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah. All these other last. teams they won, won a chip? Yeah. Every other team did win a chip. What are we doing? Pound for pound, talent for talent. No. I no. think the Spurs huh? got uh, no. is in the wrong spot, but twenty four. I do. I agree. Yeah, Spurs, no, the Spurs, Spurs are in the wrong spot though. because the Lakers. If we're doing this back, the Lakers are behind the twenty fifteen Warriors, and then the Spurs will get the third spot at number two. Do you forget how dominant that twenty twenty run was? Who did they? I think play? You can argue Spurs at one, bro. I think we went to more than five games one time, and it was in the finals. Okay, you faced Portland in the first round, uh-huh. who barely made the playoffs by the skin of their teeth. Then you Portland, faced who the, was on a heater. Then you faced Damian the Rock- Lillard was the bubble MVP. Then he you faced you faced the Rockets with Russell Westbrook on an injury and had no impact, and they had no center. You picked the that Rockets was the worst iteration. <laughs> okay, there of we course, go. You- I'm a James Harden fan, but that was the worst iteration <laughs> of remember. that Rockets team uh-huh. in the, in the three year span they had. Uh-huh. And then in the, the West Conference Finals, the Nuggets, that was the respectable one, like, really and then they impressive. Five. But that was a young team. Nikola Jokic had not broken out as an MVP yet. He's and, still great, though. But he wasn't an MVP-level player. That yet. was, like, the first year that he was ascending towards being a, a, a real All-NBA player, But he though. wasn't an MVP at that point. Of he course wasn't, not. He wasn't Nikola Jokic. That was two years before And then, then in the Finals, he, he, faced, great, though. he faced the Heat, who, how hobbled were they going they were, into that they, Finals? They had no band, Come no on, man. That run, was, that run wasn't that impressive. Floogie, floogie? From, from, a t- <laughs> from, a, from a team. Forget about the run. How about the roster itself? Facts. The roster itself. Really okay. good roster. LeBron, was AD, really good roster. Rondo, KCP, they had a lot, of, a lot of vets. A lot of you great had a lot of great players ways. who played their role. Yeah. Dwight. JaVale McGee. JaVale. But we can't forget about how talented the Warriors roster was. I mean, Steph Curry was the MVP uh, of the league. Of Clay Thompson was an all-NBA player. Okay. Draymond was the defense player of the year. Andre Goodala came off the bench. They That was... When their bench was their strongest with Spades, Livingston, Bogut. I mean, this team was very talented, bro. Was very talented. I think all these teams are pretty good. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. I mean, you, so you gave us I think we just disrespected the Spurs. Uh, the, so to round off the list, you had Cavs. 2016 Cavs at one. 2019 Raptors at two. 2020 Lakers at three. 2015 Warriors at four. 2014 Spurs at five. 2012 Oklahoma City Thunder. Honestly, I don't, think I don't know I probably if the Cavs are do. one. Yeah, I I don't disagree. Just overly. from a talent perspective, uh, I don't know. It's hard man. to it's hard to what they separate did, the, of course, yeah, what they did versus the talent. Just Kyrie and LeBron were just in such a mode. Yeah, yeah. Forget about the res- end result. Obviously, that's the hugest. That's the hugest part of why we have them number one. They were in such a mode. Kevin Love think, was able to do a job. Is it crazy to say twenty twenty Lakers are more talented than twenty sixteen Cavs? It's not no. insane to say at all. No, I, I think it's pretty crazy. You think so? Yes. I think that, that Anthony Cavs Davis is amazing. probably the second best player in this in of the the extracurriculars outside of LeBron. I think, and Le- by extracurriculars, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love. That LeBron was the best version of LeBron yeah. that we are going to be seeing. That twenty twenty LeBron was on his way to an MVP if the season I think was to get shut down. AD though was. Are you arguing that that version was better than twenty sixteen LeBron? No, twenty twenty nah. AD was better than twenty sixteen Kyrie though. I don't know, no, no doubt in my mind. Not because that was point guard LeBron gap, though. though. I think so. Once if AD no. was hitting threes, he was an elite defender. And he was a great scorer at that point. Bro, I mean, the run he that he was knocking down threes. The run we that LeBron that since. and Kyrie went on in that series alone, LeBron was near perfect, but so was Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I mean that that moment right there, that series, that season, single handedly, 
lifted up his legacy that's been holding on to Kyrie's legacy since 2020 but then you also have players like J.R. Smith Iman Shumpert we've had had Caruso Casey Keys Rondo JaVale last great year of Dwight too I mean Rondo was hitting threes also Danny Green was on that Danny Green was I don't talk about Danny Green because he missed the the three pointer that would have won us the championship in that game five but Danny Green was huge for that team but the, the 2020 Lakers version of Dwight Howard or the 2016 version of Trishan Thompson I, I would pretty t- much I would, evens out. Yeah, I mean, Tristan I can't Thompson talk shit. was so huge. Tristan Thompson had to stop on, on on Steph Curry down the stretch of the and game. And then Kevin Love was their third best player. We can't forget about him. He played his role. He had a, you know, he was definitely boxed into a role that it wasn't the best for his play style, but he played it to the best of his ability. Iman Shumper, J.R. Smith. I mean, Iman Shumper was one of the best defenders. See, in the but league I think at that AD point. puts him in a box. They have nothing for AD. I think they have people for Kyrie, like the 2020 Lakers. They 2016 Cavs have no answer for Anthony. That Davis. KCP Caruso Rondo trio, it would be pretty tough on Kyrie Irving. I don't think they would guard Kyrie regardless. I think that version of Kyrie of is just different. I, I he went on a three game yeah, heater. He was I mean, that version of Kyrie. You know, Clay Thompson was. Well, a he really defender. activated. He activated in the playoffs. If I'm not mistaken, he didn't average 20 points in the regular season that season. He he really took it to a new gear in the last three games of that finals. He was awesome that entire playoff run, but the last three games, they just took it to new heights. I just feel like looking at that team, it's you just can't. My I know I know you want to uh, base it off of just solely talent and not what they accomplished. He averaged 20 a game. Okay. Around it. But uh. being a team that just had the best regular season in the history of the league, that is going to weigh a lot. You know, that's okay. the best team ever, you know, regular season wise. And if it hadn't been a historic LeBron and Kyrie run, then they would have won the championship and had the best season in NBA history. That Golden State Warriors team, y'all got into an argument of whether or not it's a super team. You argued it was a super I team. I did think so. So, you, so essentially, the Cavaliers beat a super team in the finals. I, that's why I'm fine with one. Yeah, th- that's why I, I don't know. I think that Cavaliers team, for what they did, it's just rare company. I, that, I just was can't. that Cavs team not a super team? Listen, in hindsight... When it was first built, for sure. Yeah. When it was first built, for sure. I think they were thinking of getting a better version of Kevin Love. For sure. But Kevin yeah. Love had to adjust to LeBron. Mm-hmm. So he lost a ton of weight. He stopped playing through the post. Mm-hmm. He became a spot-up shooter. He was still an all-star, though. He was still 16 and 10. He just wasn't 25 and 13. Yeah. That's what he was in Minnesota. Yeah, dominant interior force. Getting hella rebounds. What what do you have? Over 40 double-doubles in a season, right? At that at one point, one season. No, yeah, there was a reason why they he was the awesome. number one pick for him. He was incredible. Two, Technically two, Anthony Bennett and Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> Shout out to Anthony Bennett. I feel like what drags down those Cavs teams a lot, <clears throat> when you talk about hindsight, is Kevin Love, though. Mm-hmm. That's the weak link of the team. I agree. That uh, Even in the playoffs, like he wasn't that impressive. No, I agree. And, and especially in the finals, he wasn't on shit. It's a shame because that 2015 run, Kevin was playing some solid basketball and then just gets his shoulder just taken out of his socket. Yo, shout out. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly Olenek. I agree. Uh, but, but then that 2016 year, he follows up, really did struggle, but especially in the playoffs. But when we needed him, he gave us one of the biggest stops in Cavalier history, honestly. So, I mean, I'm fine with the the, the ranking. I think if, if I had to switch it now that we know what's up, maybe I contemplate that Spurs and, and Raptors. I switch them. I feel like I could live with having the Raptors a little bit lower and understanding that 2014 Spurs team. I mean, you had the breakout of Kawhi Leonard. I mean, Tony Parker, Mon Ginobili, Tim Duncan. You have Greg Popovich as your head coach. That Them being five makes this list pretty terrible. I do feel like what elevates those Cavaliers him is just that was the best version of LeBron ever. Santos just posted his hoodie. What great timing. <laughs> Love that. Love that a lot, actually. Uh, I think Cavaliers tenure is the best version of LeBron. I don't know if 2016 is the best version of LeBron. Yeah, because 2012, he had a better season with the Heat, so you could argue one of those, but I do think that... I think 2018 LeBron is the best LeBron, though. Oh, when he carried the Cavs to the finals? Yeah, that's one of the best. But 2016 LeBron versus 2020 LeBron, even though it's both still LeBron, I do think that 2016 from an athletic standpoint, was much more athletic, even though LeBron is still very athletic. Uh, I just feel like LeBron in 2016 was just better, just much, much better. I feel like we just didn't see him lose a step. Uh, I think that we look at him losing a step maybe that year after 
in the, in that 2021. I know he was injured in 2019, but in 2020, transitioned to playing point guard, was more on ball, led the league in assists, also still averaged 25. And then when you needed him to become a scorer in the playoffs, he still was able to elevate in that in that sense too. I don't know. It's tough. I mean, obviously, you get older, you're going to naturally de- decrease in athleticism, but it, it never really was evident watching him. And when you need him to get a stop, he's always been able to do that. We saw that season, actually, now that you make me think about it, we saw right before the, the league shut down, he had stops against Kawhi Leonard and Paul George and stops against Giannis Antetokounmpo in back-to-back games. He was on his way to winning his MVP and the league shut down. And then, of course, Giannis ends up winning it. I still do believe that that was LeBron's award, even regardless of that. But we'd seen in moments even in that regular season, him still be, still be able to be that dominant force on the defensive side of the ball. Today's sponsor of this episode is Factor yes, sir. Meals. Fellas, Factor Meals, they sent us a box. A clutch. It's very easy. And you know what? Mm. After they sent us a box, I went and I got a subscription myself. That's how much I'm loving the meals. Whoa, that's how much that's I'm loving real. the meals. Kept that under wraps. Now, l- let's tell people how easy it is to use Factor Meals. What it's, is it? You go. Simple. This guy can figure it out. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good point, man. All you got to do. Wow. Get the, get the package. No, listen. Sometimes jokes are true. And he <laughs> cooked right there. In fact, Drew, we have a video of you showing the process of doing it. So just explain. I that mean, it was as easy as it gets. I go and I get my factor package. I take the meal out, pop it open, just stab three holes in it, put it in my microwave for two minutes. I got a meal. Mm-hmm. That's how easy it is. Two minutes and you got a meal. The food's good. You know, sometimes you get these like prepackaged Man, meals. You're a little iffy. Yeah. I mean, you one. get you the, get a good protein not even there. That, like when you... Get you know some veggies. Some, sometimes when you uh, reheat something or you put something in the microwave, it sometimes comes out soggy yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. stuff like this is perfect. Like nah, you I was put it in, meals. it's beautiful, it's fresh, it's hot. I love it. These are chef prepared meals, and you get to Shout choose to and select the meals you want sent to you each week. They have other add on things like smoothies mm. and energy shots. They, they give you shots, Max. Yes, yeah, the they're shots called wellness hidden. shots. The meals I got, I got a buttered chicken, I got a chicken piccata. Nah, they were on something. They're on something it, crazy. If you're lazy, I think uh, I'm lazy. If you're lazy to cook, especially, this is something that you could use. So you don't got to cook and you could just plop a meal into the microwave, two minutes, easy. I bring it it's to lunch that every day. simple. You can head to factormeals.com slash PAS50 and use code PAS50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next mm. box. That's code PAS50 at factormeals.com slash PAS50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Two major injuries that happened. Jimmy Butler against the Sixers suffered a MCL injury. And then Zion against the Lakers had a hamstring injury. Less than five minutes left in the fourth. He makes a move, goes to the basket. Easy. Makes the basket, and then he is hobbling after and goes straight to the locker room. These are two major injuries that happen in the playing tournament. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. I've seen some people argue about um, how this might be a bad look for the play-in because they got hurt. I do think that it's just a, a coincidence. Because the play-in, even though it is an extra game of basketball, you do argue that, you know, these are two players that played for two teams that would have been in the playoffs without the Mm play-in. You know, they earned the spot throughout the regular season, and this extra game they played in, they got injured in. But I think the major storyline from this is, I have two takeaways, really. With the Heat and Jimmy Butler, I think it might be best for them to miss the playoffs at this point. I mean, I think with Jimmy Butler's not going to play, you're not going to have a chance. You might as well just get a first round pick that's that's a lottery pick but for the pelicans i mean this hurts zons is, is not going to play in the playoffs at all if they do beat the kings and that game is even a toss-up with how keon ellis has been playing defensively he's really been a difference maker for the kings but zion had 40 points and he was doing his thing he was dominating anthony davis and whatever matchups they had didn't on matter. him it didn't matter and i think what sucks is that this is the version of zion that we want to see And what held him back is ultimately what everybody is always worried about with him, and that's getting injured. And it sucks even more so because this was the healthiest that we've seen him. We did see him play 62 games in the shortened 72-game season. But even still, we we saw him even healthier this year. We saw him take the Pelicans to another height that we haven't seen. And he was playing dominant basketball in the biggest game of his career. Being the best player on a court with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, who I think in his own right was dealing with some injuries. He was probable coming in, did end up suiting up. But he wasn't. it wasn't the best version of Anthony Davis that we've seen, especially against the Pelicans, who usually he feasts on. But he was the best player on the court. 
No doubt about it. No doubt in my mind. He was at a, just a different level, head down, get into the bucket. Everyone jokes saying, hey, you know he's going left, but there's simply nothing you can do. You can't stop it. There's no joking there. He's going. He's inevitable when he gets into that paint area. But it, it sucks because everyone's now going to get their jokes off. Everyone now starts to to feel like, oh, some some level of vindication uh, that, that they've always been right about Zion Williamson doesn't really care about his body. But what you can't say and what's undeniable is his talent. And we saw it against the Los Angeles Lakers where they're going on their run when they're down almost 20 points and they're going on their run down the stretch of the game and it's led by Zion, the offensive side. You saw CJ McCollum, who the, 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 the crew would not stop talking about. Oh, he's been one of their most impactful players for months now. Hey, you could argue he's been their most impactful player. And he struggled the entire game, really couldn't get it going, did hit a shot late in the, in the game to, to really help out the, the Pelicans. But you saw the life get sucked out of the Pelicans when he got taken off the court and when he had to go into the locker room. People question his drive, his passion for the game. You see him actively frustrated, taking the towel, throwing it against the the sideline, and walks into the locker room clearly upset. He lives for these moments. We saw it, the first taste of the playoffs, a 40 bomb. I mean, how many times do we see a young player, their first taste of the playoffs, and, and they fold up. It's the big lights. It's the bright lights, the biggest stage. And you're not at 100%. We saw Zion in that moment, and he was arguably one of the best debuts in a playoff that we've seen in recent memory, I'll say, against a great de- defense that he struggled with all season long. And to see him go out like this is terrible for me. What, what a response. I mean, you got a team that just destroyed you a couple of days prior. Facts. You know, you go into this game, you're home. You're down 18. You know, it looks like the energy is off. B.I.'s not playing well. C.J.'s not playing well. Then Zion just continues to keep attacking, keep attacking. He was he was pretty much walking the Lakers down. Like, there was nothing they could do nope. with it. The momentum was there. The energy had shifted. Zion looked like he was going to take over the game. It looked like the Lakers were going to lose. Jose Alvarado was making big plays down the stretch. He, I was glad they sat C.J. and Cap Alvarado in because the way he was playing, it was just like beautiful basketball. Trey Murphy hit a big shot late in the game. Then Zion goes down. It, it, it's tough to see from a player that's been dealing with injuries for most of his career. You know, it's tough to see, especially from this organization that's been praying and hoping he stays healthy and him and B.I. find that connection. You know, they stay on the court for, you know, a, a, a shit ton of games and they just haven't been able to do that. I think the biggest storyline for me in this game, excuse me, is B.I. I think when you... Look at the game, right? And you watch Zion killing, killing. And you notice Brandon Ingram is on the bench late in the stretch. He's on the bench while they're making this comeback. And then he, like, Zion goes out, and you would think Brandon Ingram being the star that he is could still win win them this game, and he just could not. I think it goes to show, like, what type of player he is. I think this game is probably the most important game of Brandon Ingram's career because now all the sun, like all the light is on you. You're, Zion is not going to play that game. You have an op- opportunity to really go out there, put this team on your back. Like we've seen you do, like especially last year, late in the stretch, oh, yeah. we've seen you put this team on your back and show your performance, show your ass off. You have an opportunity to kind of rewrite the wrongs, go in there, dominate the Kings who haven't been a good defense. I know Keon Ellis has been playing a great defense for them, but Brandon Ingram, you're 6'9", long arms. You have the midi, you have the three ball, you can get to the rim. It's it's going to be tough, and the conversations are going to be difficult if you have another stinker in this play-in. The Pelicans completely missed the playoffs after essentially, like you mentioned, being top 10 in net rating all year, kind of being in that playoff spot all year to just lose two back-to-back playing games. And I know injuries do suck, but it happens to all teams. And then Brandon Ingram doesn't show up for neither one of them. You know, it's, it's conversations are going to be had, especially for CJ McCollum. You know, and I think this team, we all admit, even though they were top 10, they kind of need a retool in the sense of Jonas isn't the center, CJ isn't the point guard that they need. They still need a different type of gear at, at those two positions, but nonetheless, they were still playing ball. As for Miami, uh, Jimmy getting hurt was tough. I thought he was playing well before that. Defensively, he was engaged. He was locked in. You know, he was getting to the line like his usual self. And I think Miami just... The way they play zone, it's not like a traditional 2-3 or 3-2. Three, it's kind of just like a flyby. You know, we we want the guard, and we, we, we want to make sure your two stars are out the game and we let everybody beat us. Our zone is to focus on those two guys and being a maxi, and they did just that. But when Nurse kind of adjusted in the second half, it was big for them. They made their big comeback. 
And Embiid was still hobbled. You can see that. Embiid and Butler, honestly, were both hobbled, banged up. And you, you saw the other guys, Batum, step up. Maxi hit a couple buckets late, stepped up. Like, it, it's that type of performances that you need. For the Heat, I just I don't know where they go from here. You've kind of had, you know, the the benefit of making three ECFs and two finals in the past four years, you know, and now you've kind of gotten a situation where you're about to play the Bulls. You can you can still win that game, but what is the what is the benefit of going to the playoffs without Jimmy Butler? You're gonna play Boston. You're probably gonna get destroyed in four games. You, you without your best player, you don't really have a chance at all. This is the guy that kind of wills your team. He embodies what your Heat culture is. You're not gonna have him, and it's tough for Jimmy because he's hitting that age. You know, contract is coming soon. They're gonna pay him, I assume. But he's hitting to that age where now you know the window is becoming. It's already been small for Miami in a sense where. They come in, you know, you don't expect this team to do any big things, and then they kind of in the playoffs turn it up. But the window is getting extremely small for that type of product to continue or that type of, you know, situation to continue to happen. Miami do, Miami needs dudes, and I don't know if they're going to be able to do it with the type of bad contracts they have. And, you know, Terry Rozier, he didn't play that game. So it's tough for both of those players to just get injured in the, in the moment where we wanted to see them play. You know, we hate – injuries this time of the season we wish it happens earlier and everybody's healthy at this time but you know hopefully both of them get better this was probably zion's best game of his career i mean you know first game of the playoff shop in 40 17 of 27 from the field adds on 11 rebounds five assists only three turnovers and you know he was really the only person who was able to do anything for this team outside of jose alvarado and trey murphy hitting a couple threes um in this game but it really sucks because you guys mentioned it. This was a game that had a lot of swings. You know, early in the game, Pelicans were up. Lakers go on a run. Pelicans go on a run in the fourth quarter. Of course, a lot of basketball games were like that. But being in the play and kind of do or die, even though you have one more game, but just being able to solidify yourself as that seventh seed, there's just so many different swings of emotions. And throughout this entire game, whether it was positive or negative for the Pelicans, Zion was really the only person you could look at when you gave, gave him the ball and felt really confident that he was going to be able to go downhill and get a basket. And if they were able to win or lose, but I guess specifically if they ended up losing this game, but Zion ends up being healthy, say they beat the Kings, I still would take the Oklahoma City Thunder in that series, in that one versus eight series, but I think that's a pretty good matchup for the Pelicans. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of guys that the Thunder can throw at Zion, especially mm -hmm. when you look at those bigs. I don't think Chet's going to have a lot of um, positive interactions with Zion in the paint if he's able to kind of destroy AD the way he was. Of course, you have guys like J-Dub and Lou Dort who are physical, but Zion had just been on a different type of time this year that I don't think those guys would have stopped him. Uh, again, I probably would have taken the Thunder in that series, but if you're a Pelicans fan at that eighth seed, you're probably thinking, like, we at least have a shot here. You know, this could be a six-game series. If Zion's able to put up this type of performance multiple times, this could go seven, and if it's a seven-game series in that seventh game, who knows what happens. So it sucks if you're a Pelicans fan because you're playing a, a Kings team who's going to have all the momentum in the world. They're, you know, on top of the world probably after they just beat the Warriors, who, of course, beat them in seven games last season. They had one of their better defensive performances of the season, specifically guarding Steph Curry, just constantly blitzing him, constantly throwing two, three guys at him right when he passed half court, denying him off the ball. I thought Mike Brown had a tremendous scheme to go up against the Warriors, who have had some success with them this season. Um, and then for the Heat and Jimmy Butler... You mentioned it, that it was both stars. Embiid got banged up. Jimmy Butler got banged up. I don't remember exactly when Embiid got hurt. Maybe he was hobbling all game, but Jimmy Butler got hurt within the first two or three minutes of the game. You know, it was early on in that first quarter. He gets hurt, goes to the free throw line, but he's really limping that entire game. And then you see after the game, it looks like he could barely put any Bad. weight on that knee. And you get the news later that he's out for multiple weeks and it's going to be unlikely that he plays in the first round if they even get there. I agree with you though, Riv. I do think in the grand scheme of things, it's probably best for the Miami Heat to to kind of have a mini reset if they end up missing the playoffs. I still think they have a pretty strong chance to beat the Chicago Bulls. They're going to have home court advantage. I don't know the status on Terry Rozier, but I think there's maybe a chance he plays. Of course, you still have Spo, who's the best head coach in the NBA. But it gives you a chance to kind of really evaluate this team because last season, you know, they, they get the eight seed. They go on this historic run. They make the NBA Finals. And all season long, Heat fans were just telling us, we just got to get in. We just got to get in. And to an extent, I, I could I could see where you're coming from because you had just in it the previous season. Who am I to say you won't do it again? But there's a difference between doing being consistently great and having an anomaly. You know, there's a reason why 
90% of champions, 99% of champions are a one or two seed in the East or West. There has rarely ever been a time that you have a seven or eight seed that's able to get to the finals, let alone win an NBA finals. I think even if they were, even if they did have Jimmy Butler going up against the New York Knicks, going up against the Boston Celtics, I probably would have taken both of those teams over Miami. But as we stand now, you have a chance that you might lose entirely to the Chicago Bulls. If you do get past them, you have a Boston team who has beaten you four times, three times on a 3-0, 4-0 against them this season. It's going to be tough for them to beat to beat Boston in a seven-game series. So it sucks that both of these guys got banged up, uh, but specifically for the Miami Heat, who all season long it's been, I know we're struggling, but just let us get in. We have Hame now. We trade for Terry Rozier. You know, we, we've having a, we have more talent than we probably did last season. Um, it just it, it hurts to see because we're not really going to see what their fans have been talking about all season long, flooding our comments, flooding our TikToks, our Instagram, saying don't sleep on the heat, don't sleep on the heat. Now you lose Jimmy Butler, and it's going to be hard to, to even win a playing game against I Chicago. I say this with love, Joel. You're moving nasty. You're moving nasty, and I say this with the idea <laughs> that you're still getting an agenda off, and hell, I respect it, but still getting an agenda off against Miami Heat fans off an unfortunate event that Jimmy Butler was injured this essentially the entire second quarter and on, but still taking that jab of it. Last year was an anomaly, was an eight seed where we're, we're able to make I mean, historically it. Historically, it was an anomaly. I understand where you're coming from. We but have 100 again, years of NBA. But again, we watched this Heat team come out in the first quarter and completely confuse the 76ers. Nuts, Just absolutely put them in a box, essentially that Damn entire was first half. Trouble. Kevin Love was the anchor of that defense. But still getting an agenda off. I don't think I was getting an agenda. I don't think so either. I was going to say it. I, I say agenda, but more so just. It was more so that I'm upset Jimmy Butler's hurt because uh, I want to see it. Like but, maybe the but, Heat can do it. But calling out Miami Heat fans, flooding your comments and stuff like that. Did Brother, it, we lose to the Atlanta Hawks in March, and I get fifty comments from Heat fans. What, like, who would be like? See, but ah, you're kind of, but you're like, kind of throwing it in Miami's face. Oh it's well. like it's not much that they could have done. They they played some awesome basketball. Jimmy Butler gets hurt, and even on one leg, they almost win the game. What specifically did I say that was getting an agenda off? The one of oh my Miami, Miami Heat fans are flooding our comments. Uh, uh, oh bad, oh well, too sad. Essentially, well, they were kind of Heat fans. I think all season long, I think you would agree, are saying that. It's fine that we're kind of playing mid basketball because we just need to get in. You do know who you're talking to, though. You're talking to me, the epitome of we just need to get in, and I don't worry about the rest. Yeah. Miami Heat lived that and went to the ent- went to the fucking finals. Lost. The Heat were never going to go to the finals this year. I agree with that. Healthy. I agree with that. Yeah. My point being though is they went in. We we round table felt Philly was going to win except for Riv because he respects what happened last year with the Miami Heat. And in the this first half. Riv looked smart as fuck. And Does unfortunately... Nick Nurse and the 76ers getting oh, no credit I, I for adjusting them, for hitting I give, shots, for him being I give, that fourth Nurse, quarter coming alive. I give Nick Nurse Somebody a ton of credit a, for him. What, 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 what a big thing that happened in the half. second half was that the Heat couldn't guard anybody. They couldn't guard the ball. And Tyrese Maxey was getting to the paint every time that he wanted. That That's the major adjustment that happened in the second half. It wasn't anything... Specific from an X no standpoint that Nick Nurse did, it was more so Tyrese Maxey just couldn't. Be I just didn't never feel like back. I didn't feel like Maxey <laughs> even played particularly well. I look at down the stretch and honestly, it was the extra passes finding the z- the open yeah, player the in the zone, drive penetration. Yeah, but more so, it was but that's it was a lot of going into t- halftime telling your team that you're rattled. Yes, relax, calm it down, read the defense because in the first half they were just they were fidgeting. They didn't know what to do. They seen mm-hmm. the zone. They started to panic. Coming into the second half, Nick Nurse, Nick Nurse must have said something in that we locker We haven't room. even spoke about Batum once. Batum was one of the main Nick reasons Batum. why they won yesterday's why game. Yeah, he Again, had 20 points. But it was a lot of <laughs> Embiid reading the defense. A lot, well, I'll throw Maxi in this conversation, but a lot of Embiid because Embiid was unbelievable in that fourth quarter, especially for how he started. But finding that open guy, finding the, the open guy in the zone, and Batum being big down the, club, down the stretch. Again, that you do instill that as your as your coach. It's like, hey, Embiid, you are our best player. I understand you feel like you need to put that on your shoulders. Trust your teammates. Listen, I don't want this to come across sideways. I've been saying for months, I want the Celtics to play the Heat the, in the first the, round. The oh well too sad when Jimmy Butler does get hurt is a little crazy to me. I, I think, I mean, it's upsetting if you're a Heat fan, is it not? Uh, I, I don't know, but again, you're kind of making it backhanded. Like, if I'm a Heat fan, I'm, I'm Are you giving that. Jimmy a pass for this uh, shitter? 
I mean, he was hurt. I'm not going to bag on him for it. So I'm saying, do you give him a pass? For this? Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Butler's had multiple great playoff games. And, that, I, and also, I wanted to okay. speak to something that you said, Riv. Talk to me, talk to me. Um, I do think of these two teams, the Pelicans are by far more interesting to oh, talk for about. Sure. Uh, I just feel like the Heat, they've been a mediocre team all year. They well, were never going to make it. They're only run. more interesting because they're the new shiny toy. No, they're I, more I, interesting because they're like, more talented. Uh, they're a better team. We can't. Like li- we live in hindsight. It's great. He is the hindsight's beautiful. At the same time, the Miami Heat healthy in the playoff setting are still a respectable team. And I feel like with the Pelicans, forty six and thirty six, there is a lot of conversation about whether what what they should do moving forward in the future, trying to break up the team. I want to speak something you said about Brennan Ingram. Brennan Ingram gets a pass from me one hundred percent. Uh, he, he does. This is his second game off second an M- game MCL knee injury. He's coming back from that. He was playing at a high level. He suffered that injury. Wait, did I say he shouldn't have got a pass? You essentially said the guy I'm looking at is Brendan Ingram. I think he's saying for, for this, this, for this game. upcoming game. Oh, no, you talked about him for the game that they played against the No, yeah, I said Lakers. he didn't play well, but I'm saying for this upcoming game against the Kings, all eyes will be on Brendan Ingram. But you also said that in the games that he played, you were looking at him to take over these games. You, you were looking at him to take over the Lakers game. Now, I, I, I don't, think, I don't think that's how I understood it. How I understood it was you have Zion going off. You have CJ who struggled, but once Zion went out, you're anticipating B.I. to come oh, back for in. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. CJ McCollum is the biggest disappointment. He's the oldest player on the team. He has loads of playoff experience. This isn't a playoff game, by the way. It's a playing game. It's not a playoff game. Uh, it's not a playoff uh, game. Come on. You're man. Facing, the stats don't count. You're facing this team once, and they once you play them once, you're not facing them again, so there's no adjustment period from any team. Well, the Pelicans um, and Lakers had just met the game before. I understand that, but this was not a playoff game. I'm just saying it's a playing game. This That's is playoff atmosphere, though. Exactly. I, I agree with that. Um, with Zion... The Lakers wasn't doubling him at all. He was going one on one the entire time. I don't know why they let him go one on one as much as they is, did. It usually is LeBron and AD going ping ponging that double team. It, they they were just Pause. leaving him alone Sorry, the LeBron. entire game. But what I will say is that CJ's the biggest disappointment. Brandon Ingram, I feel for him because he had a knee injury, and his first two games back from that knee injury are two highly intense basketball games that feel like a playoff game. And that is very hard. It's the same thing that J.J. Redick was pointing out with Joel Embiid, and Joel Embiid did not have a good game. He might have had a good fourth quarter and made some timely plays, That's what you but need for, from your but for the majority of the Sixers versus Heat game, he was a major disappointment. Now, I was screaming like I was a 76ers fan when Joel Embiid was But squeaking. you said something important just now. You just said he was shitty the first three quarters, of course. But in that fourth quarter, even though he is hobbled, even though he is banged up, he still showed up for his team when his team needed him. I and I'm not gonna say you, I'm not gonna put all the blame on Brandon. Brandon Ingram didn't play at the end of the game. Yeah, no, I was that, gonna that's, say that's Willie saying. Green I, 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 managed Willie those Green. 25 minutes that he played horribly. Yeah, Willie Green sat him. No, no, think I, don't I don't think Ingram. So. They were on a heater. No, but you yeah. don't. But you don't play him the last, essentially fourth quarter. I mean, no, they had like a lineup in that was that was doing. Was good. But you had. But Zion goes out. I thought B. I was gonna come in at that moment. That's what I'm saying. That's what I thought. You have three minutes left. You. This is your chance to put yourself into the playoffs, unless you're ducking Denver. Is that what they were doing in well, that it's moment? Not, it's not ducking. I think that Willie Green was just savoring, him, looking out for Brendan Ingram. I think he was doing that. I think he was managing his minutes, and he didn't want him to to see. But that's force my, his but, body. But that's there. my point, though. You can still manage your minutes and still be cautious and, and and be mindful of the stress that you're putting on Brandon Ingram. But in the last three minutes of the game. I need my second best player out there. Well, he wasn't playing good, and he wasn't their second best player that and game. And neither was CJ McCollum. He, he benched CJ too. CJ was took benched. A, it took him a minute That's though. Good. It took him CJ a and Bi were both benched. They had their 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 lineup that was playing the best out there. I thought Willie Green coached a fantastic game, and sometimes you have to make those tough decisions. Steve Kerr in the twenty twenty one NBA Finals, no, twenty twenty two NBA Finals. I keep mixing up the dates. Twenty twenty two NBA Finals. He benched Draymond, and he's the hard sort of team. Sometimes you got to make hard decisions and. B.I. coming back from an injury like that, a knee injury, I understand why he was managed. That's why I say C.J. is the one have, I'm looking well, at. B.I. didn't have most. minutes restrictions last game. And, and C.J. came in the game when Zion was taken out. So instead of putting in B.I., they put in C.J., who was having an objectively b- bad game, and you could say he was the worst Pelican on the floor. Instead of Brandon in that situation, they go to C.J., which, again, is fair. C.J. has been playing some great ball. But find a way to 
to get Bria in the game. I think the difference is that CJ is 100% healthy. He, he's, he's No, that healthy. is the, di- that is the difference. He looked worse than Bia. He did look That's worse than Bia. He's a disappointment for the Pelicans. This team is young. I mean, you had Trey, you had Herb, you had Alvarado. The, it, with Zion, those guys were balling. Even without Zion, obviously he's the one that, that opened up the court for them. But Trey was letting it go from the parking lot. Alvarado was locking up, hitting some, some timely shots. Of course, Herb Jones doing what Herb Jones does. It's just tough in these situations where you lose Zion. Oh, I still have B.I. available to me. I get you. He hadn't been playing well, and he is on a minutes restriction. But he's available to me. I can win this game. Looking at that game, you're not taking Jose Alvarado out. But he also was dealing with an ankle injury. Yeah, but he was playing his ass off, and he was in pass. He's a hustle guy. He you made a mistake. The fuck he out made a him. mistake. He, threw, he, he didn't take a layup that was wide open. Yes. That was a major mistake. You're not taking Jose out. Snatched it. Yeah, You're facts. not taking Trey Murphy out. You're not taking Herb Jones out. Larry Nancy, your small ball five. You can't take him out. So the other guy, and when Zion went out, I think they put in Dyson Daniels. No, when Zion went out, they put in CJ. Okay, they put in CJ. That made sense. That made sense putting in CJ, who's more of an initiator than Brandon Ingram. CJ's got to play well. This team, every role player is 26 or under. All their best players are 26 and under. Brandon Ingram, Zion, their oldest players that play minutes are CJ and Jonas Valanciunas. This roster is a great collection of talent. It's not a roster that fits around Zion's strengths the best because CJ McCollum has is a two guard. He's not a real point guard. He's not a real playmaker. It sucks because we saw it hitting on all cylinders on Tuesday in that fourth. In that fourth quarter, that Pelicans team was cruising. But you look at this team. Brandon Ingram and Zion, they aren't the best fits. They can play well with each other, but they aren't the best fits next to each other. CJ McCollum's not a point guard. That's who's running the show for them as a point guard, even though Zion does a majority of playmaking. I also think it's tough to say that B.I. and him aren't a good fit when they were healthy on the court. They were pushing for that fourth seed. Yeah, but they that's with somebody sacrificing a role. They're, they're both not at their best when they're playing off each other. And then center play, I mean, Jonas is not the center Undeniable. for them. So you're having two and a half players really in a lineup that don't really fit the strengths of your best player. With Brandon Ingram, you can suck it up because he's just so talented. He, he's a shot maker. But Brandon Ingram is also a player that, I mean, he's shown us what he could do at the playoffs before. Game two against the Suns, he had 37. You know, they, they, they were tied 2-2 going into game five and – those Pelicans, they pushed that Suns team to six games, which was a surprise to everybody. And Ingram averaged 29 in that series. So I know what Ingram can do when healthy. Um, I just think it's unfortunate that the Pelicans peaked at the wrong time. And when they peaked, Ingram suffered a pretty major injury that he most likely rushed back from in an intense environment. So that's why I... I oh, he gets a pass. Even if yeah. he plays poorly against the Kings, it's his third game back. And you know I don't think he will play poorly, but if he does play poorly... It's his third game back off a knee injury. I can't say I can't really harp on a guy too much. And then with Zion Williamson, it's just an an injury. So this team just has to be healthy when moments matter the most. That's what you're hoping for. But this team is really talented. And if they can sure up the spots that they're weakest at, I think this is going to be one of the best teams in the West. It's the 11th youngest team. Coming into this yeah, season. Post All Star break, there were strong conversations about them being a top three team and forget about the West in the NBA. They were playing at an elite level on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball, mostly that defensive side. But I I, I agree. I, I give Brandon Ingram a pass. I don't have a problem with how he played. I'm not giving CJ McCollum a pass by any means, but down the stretch of the game, when Zion goes out, you can give me three minutes. You can give me three minutes. And I know that you've missed some time. You've missed two weeks of, of, of significant basketball, and it is in a more intense environment. Three minutes. I know you can give me that. I know Brandon Ingram wanted to go into that game. I, that's why I look at Willie Green, and he's been one of the better coaches this season, but you, ha- you played him 25 minutes regardless at the end of this game, and he didn't even sniff the fourth quarter. So that's why I feel like that, I, that's where I have difficulty sitting with this one. It's like, B.I., when, when Zion goes out, you have a, a number two there. And he's been sitting for a while. He put CJ in. That's the number two. And that's an that L. Game. For that game. You know, I I don't know. I just think, you know, if Zion is healthy, it was very, it was looking like the Pelicans were going to win that game. It's a whole that, different conversation. And I'm not even so, here denying and, that. And nobody would have said nothing about Willie Green benching Brandon Ingram for the entire four. I don't think, no, my issue's not no, that. No, I, don't think I didn't care not, that he was sitting him. I'm but not, when Zion goes out, I got a fucking problem. I'm not mad that they benched him. They had a better lineup. But 
once again, Brandon Ingram didn't have a minutes restriction. And I think you, you, unfortunately, you being as talented as you are, they're going to look to you to lead this team, whether you're injured or not. Everybody's injured late in the season. You're going up against the Kings. You're back at home. Facts. You have an opportunity to get to the playoffs. We can't. Game's still winnable. We can't winnable. keep using the, they just got to be healthy. We know they got to be mm-hmm. healthy. But the problem is them being healthy. Now you have an opportunity to still win this game. The Kings are coming in with a hella. Uh, hot. They're mm-hmm. coming in hot. They're coming in with hella confidence. You still have Brandon Ingram on that side. Brandon Ingram's probably going to come in thinking, I have to play well. I have to be the guy to step up. Of course. I just think the Lakers game, I really no, had I'm, no problem I'm, with him not being I'm, in that I'm not mad at him Even either. in the last three minutes. No, they put CJ in. Uh, but so CJ's been playing like dudes. Yeah, but so the wrong. I'd rather put anybody else but CJ. He was so bad. He was I think even so if bad. you put B.I. in, which I agree, you probably should have put Ingram in just because he gives you probably more scoring upside even with the injury with yeah. C.J., especially if C.J.'s not knocking down shots. It's tough for him to, to do really anything else outside of Brand, Brandon Ingram has, I think, a little bit more in his bag. But once Zion went out, you can make the move for C.J. You can make the move for Brandon Ingram. I have a hard time believing the Pelicans are going to win that game either way. Once Zion goes out, he was the only person who was generating consistent offense. So you could put Brandon Ingram out there, but then you risk Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram sees, oh shit, Zion's out. I'm the number one guy now. Now you're putting more pressure on his plate. Like Joel mentioned, this is only the second game back from that MCL injury. You worry about him possibly re-aggravating it. Of course, this is all hypotheticals, but regardless of the move Willie Green made, I don't think down the stretch they would have won that game without Zion. You know, Zion was that much of a difference maker. The Warriors lost. That's what I started the show with about how Riff felt about it. The Vegas still has the Warriors as heavy favorites to retain Steph next Minus 5,000. Minus 5,000. Essentially a lock, Minus right? Minus 5,000. You know who number two on the list? San Antonio. Spurs. Really? The Spurs, yes. They were like still like plus like 800 or some shit. I'll but. put 10. But you look at this, the Warriors. Clay Thompson is an unrestricted free agent. Definitely doesn't leave a great taste in your mouth that he had the game that Tough he game. had. Uh, it, it is important to note, though, that uh, he was averaging 23 in the month of April, he was, seven yeah. games. He it's was really, really playing well. well. We, it, we had a very easy schedule. And then post post the All-Star break. Like he, no credit from Rick. <laughs> post the All-Star break, he averaged 19, shot 41% from three, One 45% from the field. The no, I know, but he was, still, he was still playing well. That's what I'm saying. We, was crazy we that literally you're... just spoke about it, though, on our prediction, saying that Clay Thompson's been really good recently. Yeah, it's been cool. One it's of crazy. The, your third best player got benched. Was that their best? Trace Jackson Davis. That's what he told me. Oh, I don't know why he did. No, well, he he definitely was frazzled. It looked like yeah. he was frazzled. I don't think in it was a great game. match for him either way. I think that with the Most Warriors, I mean, it's pretty much over. I think so. Uh, it, it's very, it's going to be very hard to build a contender around Steph Curry. Shout to the Warriors, man. Historic team. Historic Steph franchise. Curry is still an elite player. It's over, man. I think he's one of the ten best players in the world. Still, he's probably Stamp even it. higher. Unless the roster is absolutely perfect around him, I don't know if he can be the best player on the championship team anymore. It's not because of what he could do on an individual game basis. It's because of his age and him having to carry such a huge load at his age. I think if the roster is is perfect around him, kind of like a 1A, 1B scenario, he could still be the best. But he needs a real legitimate co-star. And I'm not talking about a Pascal Siakam co-star. He needs an all NBA level player, one of the one, another top ten player to pair alongside with him mm-hmm. at this point of his career, and the Warriors just can't fulfill that. And I, I know that we're gonna harp on a Clay Thompson's awful game. I mean, he has zero points. He had a donut. He was really terrible. <laughs> he really brought down his value a lot in the off season. I also want to give credit to the Kings because Keon Ellis. I've been talking about him for a while. Keon Ellis is a difference maker. He's electric, and him finally getting into the rotation has really changed the Kings' defense around. And the Kings came out with some vengeance. They lost to you guys in the first round last year. Keegan Murray played very well. Uh, Keon Ellis played well. Their role players came up, came to play. Keegan was bugging. No, oh, yeah, he was. He's a sniper. With the Warriors, Draymond, his self-sabotaging waves. Uh, you can't trust them. Clay's unrestricted free agent. Andrew Wiggins' regression. Kaminga and Moody are due for extensions soon and i'm not sure how many of them uh, really have value in a, in a trade it, it does value it does feel like with curry it's going to come down to how badly he wants to retire a war- warrior versus how badly does he want to win another championship and if it is the latter he's not going to stay and go to state 
Hmm. I don't know, Riv. I feel like I want to defer to you. I'm actually interested to hear you guys go before I go. <laughs> There's I would a, love to see what you guys. The are future about. for Steph Curry to me is simple. I, he will I, be 37. I, he, next 37. Year. Correct. I think he will be. A warrior to the conversation about him not being a one anymore he definitely did struggle this second half post all-star break it was not the same level we saw obviously before the all-star game he he i think this post all-star break he hovered around 24 points per game his efficiency was down he really was struggling to find his but that's because defenses are playing to planning to stop him understanding that the team around him is not good and not not one that can be good on a consistent basis and this matchup, we saw it. They were throwing two, three bodies at him at all times. And Klay Thompson, who had a chance, Andrew Wiggins, who had chances, these guys couldn't capitalize. The second best player for, for the Warriors was Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga went out there, and he did, he gave his all to, to try and give them any type of chance to, to play winning basketball. The Warriors just struggled immensely. I, I look at this Warriors team, and I don't want to slight Steph Curry. Because 2022, I don't think that roster was perfect by any means. You just had the, the role players doing their job, and and doing at a high level. And Steph Curry was still able to be the best player on that team and lead that team to a championship. So I understand that that was two years removed. We're going into 2025. He is going to be the age 37, but he's still one of the best players in basketball. You still mentioned it. He's still a top 10 player at basketball. I think that's a floor for him. This team does need to get better. It needs a reliable number two. I won't go as far to say a 1B that's very hard to find in the open market unless Paul George does decide to come to Golden State, which would be very interesting from our brother Riv. I say that because there's limited <laughs> options it? right now. On, there's man. limited options Donovan of what Mitchell? you can... I don't see I don't Too see small. that as an option. And, and honestly, that backcourt would be... Electric, be not, fun. Small. Too small. That's yeah. it. Defensively, I wouldn't love it. Uh, but offensively, they would get theirs on a consistent basis. I just think these role players need to, they need to find role players that can fit around Steph and do the job that Clay once did, that Andrew Wiggins once was doing. I understand that that is difficult, but you need consistency. There was no consistency from Clay Thompson. The last month, month and a half, we saw it a little bit. We were optimistic going into this game. I never envisioned 0 for 10. Are you kidding? 0 for 10 from, from a guy who's a stamped Hall of Famer? Draymond Green, I don't look at him, although, yes, it's self-tabotaging is fair. When he got back, he was locked in. The defense that the Golden State Warriors had been playing post-All-Star break had been amazing. For them to go out there and the Kings essentially do whatever they wanted, you give credit to the Kings. And it's unfortunate that, that the co-stars or you know the role players for the Warriors couldn't go out there and, and execute like you were anticipating. But you tip your cap to Keegan Murray, who's been inconsistent in his own right, but in the playing game, he goes and he has arguably his best game of his career. So bonus was out there playing hungry. You mentioned Keon Ellis, rightfully so, one of the stars of the night. You have to respect what happened over there with the Kings. They came out hungry and unfortunate for the Warriors. They didn't go out there and execute. I'm not looking at Steph. I think that he's trying his best out there and understanding that there's not much to help him outside of him. And at, at a certain point, there's not much that you can do, especially when your guys, the guy who you've relied on, for basically the entirety of the dynasty of the Golden State Warriors had failed you in that moment. I still respect Steph and still think that he can get it done, especially in nowadays NBA. Age is not as, it's not as crucial or is not as, let me not say crucial because obviously you get older, you lose your, your, your skills, your athleticism, but it hasn't shown any signs of falling off. Defense is adjusted to Steph because the team was not up to par. I feel like teams always blitz Curry off them screens, though. Off the splits cuts, they're always going to do that. You know, and really, it's the role players that they're not hitting their shots. Of course. But with Steph, post-All-Star break, you know, you mentioned Clay, him. It doesn't matter. He was really good because it was an easy schedule. Steph, same schedule, 23 a game, 42% from the field, yep. 38% from three, 24 games played. I mean, he was far from the normal stuff. An all-NBA caliber player in the second half of the season. I'm he was you. far from that. I'm with you. Understand that. I think the best course of action for both parties, it won't happen, but if you want the best case scenario, if you're a Warriors fan or a Steph fan, I think it's Steph Curry walking to the front office and saying, let's part ways. I don't think it's, I don't think that's overreacting. I think you could look at this one Kings game where you get your ass, your ass spanked, where you can, you got bent over, spanked, spanked, spanked by Keon Allison and them boys, shout out. Doubling down, respect. But it really just shows the flaws of this team. You know, I know, Riv, you were going on Twitter a little bit with some people, but 
when you don't have a secondary creator on offense, it's going to be really difficult. I don't care who you are to have consistently playoff series after playoff series going to championships. If you don't have a secondary creator, when they went to the finals in 2022, Jordan Poole was phenomenal. I mean, he was really their secondary creator on offense. Of course, you had other guys, Andrew Wiggins and Draymond, all of these guys, of course, but I'm looking specifically at offensive side of the ball creation. They haven't been able to replace Jordan Poole. They tried, I guess, with Chris Paul, but I think when they made that trade, we kind of all knew what it was, where it's like, all right, you know, maybe this could help with some of the Steph Curry on off numbers when he goes to the bench. But in terms of, you know, competing for a championship, I don't know if this is really a needle mover. Why I say I think it's best case for Steph Curry to go to the front office and ask for a trade, as Joel mentioned, I don't think there's enough on this Warriors roster to legitimately go out there and get a secondary co-star. I agree. Not a Pascal Siakam, but a legit top 10, top 12 player that moves the needle consistently for the Warriors going forward. Because at Steph Curry, turning 37 next season, it's not about winning a playoff series. It's not about getting to the WCF. It's about winning championships. This Warriors team, hell, even if they get a second co-star, they're going to deplete all their depth, any possible draft picks, and we're still probably going to look at this team like it's going to be a bottom half of the West in terms of top 10 teams, bottom half of the West type of team. When you have Denver there, when you have Memphis coming back, OKC is going to get better. I mean, you're really at a disadvantage talent-wise as you currently stand, and although the rookies with Trace and with AirPods and Kaminga making a leap... I don't know if I have faith in any of those guys being a two for a championship contender next season. Steph Curry, I can't wait two seasons for Kaminga to take another leap or maybe AirPods or Trace to take another leap to become a reliable number two for this team. If the Warriors want to have kind of a mini reset and not drag out this this kind of retooling of a team whenever Steph Curry eventually goes into the sunset, although I think he has plenty of good years left into him, Steph Curry's trade value is still at an all-time high. Of course, it's not when he's, you know, 32 or 33 winning championships, but you're still getting everything and more for Steph Curry. Yep. If you could get a bunch of draft picks, if you could get some young players in here, of course it's going to hurt. You don't want to be that person or that team that trades away Steph Curry. But you could tell me, Riv, at how you look at the Warriors right now, is there a move they can make in this offseason that you go into next year saying, we have a legitimate chance to compete? We have a legitimate chance to go to the WCF for the finals. I have a hard time thinking of moves that could be made that puts you in that position. Uh, PG. You bring P in PG, you play him alongside Draymond Green. That's a, that's a consistent number two score. They have money for PG? If you don't bring back Clay, I don't know how the money works nowadays. You know, the second you, apron, first yeah, the apron, second. All that. That's a fact. Once you get into all that, it does get confusing. Because I mean, I I find it hard to believe the Clippers are going to be like, "We'll do you a favor and sign and trade." No, 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 no. no I no. think um, the question. First of all, it's hilarious to me how Clay Thompson hasn't developed a playmaking skill in his entire NBA career. It's actually insane to me. Um, the only person he could play make to. Trace Davis, it's, Trace. Yeah, it's like fucking insane to me. And even then, he throws some wild passes. <laughs> he did what he did yeah, throw one against the Kings. It's You're really right. crazy to me how he has just not developed that in his game. He's just kind of like, nah, I'm gonna stick to what I know. He was MPJ before MPJ. Yeah, it's it's wild. Uh, what's next for Steph? I think what I've always said is, um, you're cooking up a trade, Joel. Yeah. So, like, just oh, no, I, no, I'm, I'm, I still want to hear what Riv's saying, but I, I see you. I actually here. would love to see the trade. Okay, so the trade. Let's just say going into next season. Steph demands a trade. If you're the Warriors, are you accepting this trade from the Pelicans? You're sending out Steph and the Wiggins, and you're getting back CJ Ingram, Dyson Daniels, Jordan Hawkins, and like four or five first round picks. No comment. <laughs> Brandon Ingram or CJ, of course, you can keep one of them, or well, you'll flip CJ. You can keep Ingram, I, I you, or you uh, can listen, flip both. I'm not going to be the guy that says yes. I, if you're the Warriors, do you accept that? I would want. One young player that I'm. High I don't think. On. I don't think the Warriors. Jordan Hawkins, maybe. If if the war if Steph comes to the door and axes, then I think the Warriors would accept it. What if it's Trey Murphy in a deal instead of Dyson? So it's Trey Murphy, Hawkins, Ingram, and McCollum for Curry and Wiggins. I'll be honest. We can get CJ out of there, or or you just have Probably CJ in here purposes. for money. Purposes. I have CJ in kind of like the Drew Holiday trade when he went to the Blazers. It's like a veteran player that you can flip. And I don't think if the Pelicans get Steph, they they're keeping CJ. I think the lineup would be. Curry, um, Zion, Wiggins, get another center. Am I Herb. crazy to say if I'm the Pelicans, I need Herb and I need... Same uh, for the Warriors. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm the Pelicans. I'm trying to keep Herb. I'm okay. trying to keep Murphy yes. for years. Yes. You're trying to have Steph, 
Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Zion, and then get a Seven. five in the offseason. That's what you're trying to do. Because having t- having one wing defender is a luxury. Having two and two that can hit at a consistent rate from three. If I'm the Pelicans, I'm trying everything I can to keep him, but it is Steph Curry. So the original trade that I had was McCullum, Ingram, Dyson, Hawkins. Uh, you probably do want a better young player, but if you trade McCullum, you can probably get a young player, or if you trade Ingram. Getting B.I. back is not the worst thing I've ever heard. You do also get Dyson Daniels, who's shown a lot for you on the defensive side of the ball. Mm, I don't love it. And then for the Pelicans, I mean, it's Steph, you get Steph. Murphy, Herb, Zion. You're, you're a contender. Andrew Wiggins. Exactly. If you're healthy, you're a contender. Exactly. But that, the Pelicans are in a, in a mode right now that they, they should be looking towards that next move to stack the deck. Mm, I don't disagree. Not even a little bit. But at the same time, I just don't know if it's a realistic thought that Steph Curry gets traded. Unless he actively goes there and says, trade me, which we haven't seen him be that kind of guy, or at least in the public eye, has not been that kind of guy to go into the front office and, and ask for demands. Because what other anything. team would Steph go to that they have trade pieces? Honestly, there's a reason why they were number two. It is the San Antonio Spurs. They have valuable draft picks, and I say valuable as in they're going to be high, they're going to be pretty... It, you look at the Hawks, you look at the Spurs picks themselves, unless, of course, Steph goes there, and now it's Steph and Wemby, and now they're immediately back in playoff contention, and those picks get less appetizing, but a lot of those Hawk picks are valuable because we don't know the future of the Atlanta Hawks, and they could definitely be pretty high what lottery about, picks. Um, I would assume the Warriors would want to send them out east. Oh, God. The my, I would say, oh, say oh, well, if, you're, if you're sending out Steph, you're going into a rebuild. You ain't competing with them. Th- that's fair. Yeah. Um, but even still, uh, shit, I don't want him in the West. Fuck it. Um, Miami Heat, if you could get I was gonna say, Jaime. You look at the Spurs. You could get, you I'm have sorry. to give up probably Terry, uh, excuse, Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, some draft picks. I mean, get some young players. I don't know. Let's see. Do they have him here? Because you look, I, I, I'm with you, Joel, because at the same time when Kawhi was available, he wanted to go to LA and the Spurs said, I'd rather eat my own shit. We're sending him to Toronto. Because you look at the teams that, um, have some assets, right? The Thunder. I don't know if they're in the in the sweepstakes to get Steph. That'll probably chill because they have SJ. You know, you, you already have a lead guard. The Nuggets, of course, not. The I Timberwolves mean, don't have the Steph's assets. Steph's never been that type of guy that needs to be the the primary ball handler. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. I don't think it makes Thunder sense. For the, crazy, I don't think that yeah, the, the, the Thunder is realistic. Let me not say it doesn't make sense. Before before shit. we go on this this tangent with Steph trades, I, I would like to hear what you <laughs> think they should do. Rich. Facts. Uh, he's trying to dodge it. He's like, man. I'm <laughs> no, I was pain. like, yeah, chop it up, you know, because I think I don't think he's getting traded. I think he. I don't think he gets traded either. I but. think the whole the whole thing about me and what I think is just give him a chance. That's always been my stance. That's always been my position on it. Just give him a fighting chance. And I think Draymond getting suspended really hurt his chance. I think that was really the breaking point this season. Like I think, you know, with everything happening, them losing to the Kings, you know, them having a great record. Uh, in January, after January, Draymond getting suspended and then, you know, Clay struggling, being inconsistent, that really hurt him. Like, we, people bring up those numbers after All-Star break. That's really, honestly, in my opinion, from what I've watched, fatigue. Like, fatigue and just dead legs. I watched him in a Portland game. He missed, like, eight wide-open threes. Like, there's just moments where he's just missing. You can see the dead legs. He's tired because he has so much mileage on his legs. And this goes back to... 2021, like I think after the bubble season where he, you know, he had to backpack them to get into a playing spot to fight against the Grizzlies and the Lakers. Then, of course, 2022, Draymond went out. He was having an MVP like season. Draymond goes out. He has to do a little bit more. And then, of course, last year, you know, he had to, he had to have a really great season. So, like, this is just a bunch of mileage on the old man, you know, and unfortunately, you look at the landscape of the league. Everybody has a number two. Kawhi, LeBron, you know, SGA even has a number two that can go get a bucket. You know, Kevin Durant. Um, the Joker, like everybody has a number two, Jason Tatum, shit, even blanking, 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 Kevin Durant, Devin Joel Booker. Embiid, like Joel Embiid has a number two that can go get a bucket, you know, so it's like everybody has one, he's the lone one that doesn't. Does Jimmy? Jimmy doesn't, and that's why they're where they're at. Brunson doesn't. Brunson does not. They're just a elite ass defense. That's that's why, like you mentioned it, I think Steph is at an age where it's just hard for him to carry the load. Yeah, it is. You know, Jalen Brunson, he's much younger. And, you know, the Knicks roster is better, but they don't... He's the only creator. Like, he is one of the most blitz players in the league. He's facing, uh, like, elite-level defenses and tough defensive coverages. And I think there's a stat that 
the Knicks, they take the most percentage of shots with under six seconds left on a shot clock. Mm. And that's because it's oftentimes nobody has a shot and it's Jalen Brunson creating at the very end of the shot clock. I think the Knicks are at like 33% of their shots that come from uh, less than six seconds left on a shot clock. So he's often the only creator, but he's young enough to where he can take on an entire load of an NBA season and carry that load. With Steph, you're right. You know, Draymond goes out and that definitely hurts his chances. But in the second half of the season, it just wasn't the same explosion and consistency that we see from Steph. And that's why I think he needs a player that is going to take that load off of him for most of the season. It doesn't have to be the entire season, but at least in stretches, like, okay, in the month of March, you don't have to average 30. You know, you, you can, you can let me do that and you can kind of play a secondary role. Just somebody that just gives some, not like just somebody that helps the defensive load, like somebody that takes that defensive load off him. Like, I don't think, the role players we have now are bad. I just think they're in the wrong role. Like, I don't think Klay Thompson is a number two. You know, I don't think Kaminga should be a number three. You know, I don't think, you know, Trace Davis should be a starting center at this moment. You know, Wiggins I think being this bad really was shocking, Wiggins I is think. bad, but then he has his moments. Like, he's too inconsistent. You know, then he has his issues where he has to take away from the team. So he's not really focused. Like, it's, it's, we have good role players just in the wrong role, I feel like. And I feel like a number two would aid in that. And I think even if it's just like a, not a 1A, 1B, just a high 2A. You know, that would be, like, like pretty awesome. Like, cause then you can just get some help to him. But I don't think right now, like, outside of PG, I don't think there's a market to where there is a number another yeah, guy out there that can really, you know, get this guy another championship or get him closer. I just think in the West, you look at the number twos, a lot of number twos are better than the Warriors team outside of Steph. So it's, like, it's really difficult to just go find one, whether it be in the draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they, they won't be, you know, bad enough to be in the draft to get that. And then they just don't have the money. So I think... Also don't have your pick this year. Yeah, so I, like... And and, and this year, that's fine. This year wouldn't have been the year to get a number two anyways. It's not protected at all. It's top four protected. We'll get get, uh, raked, and we'll get in there. But um, nonetheless... (laughs) That'd be nuts. It would be hilarious. And you get clean? Sure. I mean, you just need a big. I just, yeah. I, mean, I, I think he ends up just riding out his career. Just we're, we're locking in the things we need to lock in. Olympic like gold medal. Cement, you know, we're trying is. to get that. You know, we're trying to get all that stuff. You know, trying to get this clutch player of the if year. He award. is trying to get five, though. He shouldn't stay. No chance he should There's stay. There's just isn't many teams that can offer up what they can offer for Steph. How many? And they'll be immediate title left. contenders. That's, that's the conversation that I was trying to have earlier with the trades is that. You look at the West teams, Thunder, Nuggets, Wolves, Clippers, Mavericks, Suns, Lakers. None of them have only the, the, Thunder, the they assets don't want to. to trade. And the OKC, okay, who they do, they already have a lead guard. Mm-hmm. The Kings, Rockets, Jazz, Grizzlies, Spurs, Trailblazers, it wouldn't make sense outside of the Spurs. But even then, like the Spurs, you do have Wemby, and I think he's, you know, he's elite. He's going to be exceptional. But just getting Steph and then trading a ton of for him that's not going to immediately propel yeah. you either. You have a that's short a, window, too. You trade yes. all those draft picks, Steph, be 33 years. Yeah. That's why I think the Pelicans are the only team in the West, to me, that makes the most sense. And then in the East, it's uh, the Celtics, Knicks, Bucks, Cavs. Doesn't make much sense. The Magic, it, it makes some sense there. Knicks Magic, doesn't make sense. Magic at Not with Brunson. If we're going to play with Brunson, you might as well get Mitchell. But that's what I'm saying. I think I... I mean, Curry is better than Mitchell. I understand Mitchell's younger, but we don't have the assets to get either. And we don't. I think the Knicks' downfall in any trade for superstar is going to be just not having a blue chip young player prospect that they have to offer in a trade. Yeah, you you know, when the Lakers graphics. get got a AD, you know, you you were able to offer Ingram and Lonzo. Mm-hmm. You know, with us already trading RJ and IQ, you know, they're not blue chip young players, but they were definitely valuable. Um, we don't have that. We don't have that on the team. Outside of Deuce, but he's not getting paid anything, so it's going to be hard to match the contracts. Mm -hmm. The Pacers, Sixers, Heat, Bulls, Hawks. I think, you know, what Dale said, the Heat makes sense, but do they have the capital? Who knows? I mean, they have the young players. I don't know what their draft pick status looks like. The Orlando Magic. The Magic and the Heat are the two teams that make sense. They need offense. They need shooting. You get the best shooter of all time. But you still need the Sixers. And they need, sense they if, need better guard play offensively. If the Sixers trade Maxi, and he's the centerpiece of the deal, that could make sense too. Yeah, but then you're banking on Embiid to be healthy. It's yeah. tough. Like you're it, banking on Embiid either way. Yeah, screw. And on the Pelicans, you're banking on Zion to be healthy. 
Shit. Or, I, I really, Orlando it, and stuff? There's no situation. I, I think he's, he's going to stay. He's probably just going to ride out his career unless, like, the, the point, you got to just make it competitive. You got to at least show you're trying. If you just do nothing like you've been doing, like just kind of well, got him CP3. Team, lost me. That shit was terrible. Don't make a move this offseason. Never liked it, by the way. They did draft two heaters, though. They did. Trace they did. and Pods, they did their thing this past they draft. They did, but Trace started playing late, wasn't getting a lot of burn. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Kerr had a disaster awesome year. Like that. I think that's really... The two things most shocking to me. Wiggins not playing to what I was anticipating, and Steve Kerr having the worst year of his career. Yeah, he... he like Two Kerr things Dre, you usually anticipate. Kerr and Dre had to just... Both of them two are really the reason this year was just a disaster. Like, it was just but so But you got bad. Dre back when you needed him most, and he was playing so damn well. He was. He missed too much time. Kerr, start, he st- Kerr was just trolling all mm-hmm. year. Like, he has his usual trolls, but this year, I think he was just bad. So, I don't know. What if Clay Thompson goes to the Mavs? I think they're the team that's been most linked to him. Do they have money? That's another team that I look at the Magic. I don't know if they do. I, I look at the Magic and Science. think, hey, they could use him. They I don't could. know. I think he probably stays. They I want him back. If they you can Chris shoot, ball back. I'm going automatically to the Magic because that's a, they're going to address it this offseason. They have to. The offer that he declined was two years, 48 mil uh, before the season, I think, Clay. Yeah. Can't believe that the value is the same now. You know, it's it's probably much less. Yeah, so, so probably eighteen. I think he'll get a great. He can get a Grayson deal. Yeah, yeah I think Grayson maybe. Allen deal. You know, eighteen twenty million. I think that's million. not wrong with that. Yeah. Like that's what if it's get. short, if it's two years, yeah. I'm cool with that. He's Magic not just, could use a vet too. That's another great Some point. Championship experience. I don't think he stays in Golden State. They want him so. back think, so badly. I think it's you got you got to see what Mike Dunleavy be talking about. He talking about I apologize to Steph and Draymond. What the fuck are you apologizing to Draymond? Go make a for? trade. <laughs> what, are you, like, what are you doing? Like this, he's one of the reasons. Like if anything, Dre, you should be apologizing. Draymond was hooping though, bro. You got to understand, bro. You what? Yes, he was hooping. He, he, got, lo- he got better this no, year. I, no, first of all. I told you, Dre has never. He's never you, left. You got he it. Doesn't fall you got off. it. But, but the jump shot coming back shocked the shit out of me. But you put your team in a tough position by doing all that nut shit. You yeah, did. You're right. You did. No, that's undeniable. Like, you did. Unfortunately, you did. Like if you were more mindful of your actions, we we would probably wouldn't be in this situation. But I'm not gonna put it all on Dre. But Dre gets like thirty percent. This is like the downfall of the Warriors, but I mean, they succeeded. They won a championship in 2022. Yeah, Brian think, Windhorst uh, said some cool shit. He was like, I don't have to win a chip every year. Like, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and I, and I don't think that, you know, the Warriors messed up by trying to intertwine the timelines too much because just, they won failed. with that. It's they just won they with that timeline. That's what it is. The teams miss. Wiseman was not supposed to be a bust. He was supposed to be great, actually. He I was, think them missing more on... Moody and Kaminga's development hurts more than Wiseman. But you see Kaminga Reese, of course, this Oh, yeah, Kaminga now. But I think those two, missing on them two hurt more than Wiseman. Because they want to chip without, like, Moody and uh, Kaminga was supposed to be like that now you got Moody, Kaminga, Wiggins, defensive trio with Draymond. That's, like, nasty. Like, mm-hmm. that's supposed to be one that's next to Steph. He's supposed to take over for Clay. This, that, and the third, and then it just didn't Let me work. ask you a question, though. Do you think that Kerr played Trace and Pods more this season? 100%. L- learning from his mistakes. I think it was that No, I just think too. he loves vets, veteran players, and I think Pods and Trace are veteran college players. I think they just picked up things faster. Mm-hmm. Nah, no. not Pods. Oh, God. Trace no. did. Trace, yeah. I mean, he's like a four-year. Pods beat. The leash Pods has is insane. Like it, <laughs> I've never seen a leash Kerr's ever did. He's a good player. I'm not saying he's it's not. It's because Pods started off on a on a good note and impression. Yeah. I mean, the, as soon as he got playing time, he mm-hmm. made a real impact. I think him is he doesn't complain. Kamingo was complaining. Moody Moody didn't really complain, but I mean, Kamingo nothing for Pods to complain about. Yeah, Pods don't complain even when he like makes a mistake. He doesn't. You don't see him pouting. You kind of just see him keeps his head up, gets on to the next play, and you know he's he's a smart IQ player. So. Kerr likes stuff like that. The Warriors just really caught lightning in a bottle in 2022, man. Oh, no, you Steph's know. just great, bro. In a no, no, Light, lightning in a bottle, <laughs> a, a.k.a. injured Nuggets team, injured Memphis team. That's shocking because didn't Giannis have injured uh, Ray? He definitely did. Oh, okay. I just think the West... Relax over there, buddy. <laughs> the West has gotten so much more talented. They just didn't get better with it. In 2022, the Warriors, to me, were the most talented team in the West. In the last two years, the teams in the West have really caught up. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they have, you know, the Nuggets are not injured anymore. That was huge. The Kings, they got much better, even though, you know, they're not one of the top teams in the West. Okay, C developed. Okay, C developed. The West just caught up so fast. Mavs got healthy and they got Kyrie. Yeah. It and I don't that, think yeah. the Warriors Lakers are ready for It was that, and the Warriors just didn't get better. Like, the Warriors kind of yeah. just. That's the biggest you know, issue. Yeah. The most impressive win from the Warriors was 
the Celtics series because th- that was the most talented team they played in that run. But yeah, you know, in the first round, you do face a Nuggets team with no Jamal and you know Jokic carrying that team. Listen, you need a little luck to yeah, win a championship. In the second round, Ja gets hurt, and then in the, in the, in the oh, w- WCF mid Mavs team. Yeah, the the talent that's, around that's, Luka that's, wasn't that's that good. That's the Suns' fault. Agreed. It was. Fault, you know, man. it should have been the 60, Suns and 62 Warriors. Sixty-two wins. WCF they fumbled. Sixty-five. Six, look, even better. <laughs> and uh, Memphis, they were going to lose regardless. I think so too. I think the Suns were a good matchup, but they, that they been great. Changed. Memphis was this. the worst matchup for y'all, but. No, Ja definitely kind of gave you guys. Two to one, regardless. Two one, either way. They played you very well when Ja was healthy. Two one. Okay. Still got two one. Still early in the series. That's what I said. Two one, either way. They were two one without. They were one two without Ja. One two with him. Uh huh. Yeah. I understand. They, what they spanked us without Ja. Actually, it was kind of funny. I do remember that. They destroyed us. Uh huh. Eight seed predictions in the East and West. In the East, we have. The Heat versus Bulls for the eighth seed. Jimmy Butler's heart won't play in a game. Who's your pick? Fucking Chicago. We're here, man. I'm back. It's 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 good to be back, man. I'm glad to be back. We got Kobe White. What's Kobe dropping? What's the stat line? That zone a little freaky. Um, a little freaky. Yeah. I'm gonna go 21. I'm thinking, I was thinking 23. So okay. it's cool. I think I think it's gonna be a nasty ugly one. I think Miami's defense at minimum can give you a nasty ugly game. I think Demar and Kobe come up clutch though, and Caruso is playing. Okay, we're here. We're back. Uh, this game's only interesting now because I say interesting because unfortunately Jimmy Butler will not be playing. And before this, we all came to the conclusion Miami were winning. We beat them. Now I don't feel I'm not too positive about it. Uh, last year, this is a rematch of last we year's. Choked. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, if it wasn't for us, Miami would never last spot game. Run. But that's true. That's Zach Levine butterfly effect, man. Who what shit kills happen? me? Your guy hurt hurt badly. He played like shit against Miami. Uh, but at the same time. There's still a part of me that feels like Miami can still win this game. Spoh's going to go into its scheme uh, a system without Jimmy Butler. They've played almost 20, 25 games without Jimmy Butler this season. So it's not something that they're used. They're not used to. And and Chicago, who played an awesome game against Atlanta, they went out there. Of course, Kobe White was the player of the night. I still anticipate Spo to scheme up a great, good enough game plan against Chicago and go out there and win. I think Miami wins as well. Uh, don't have nearly as much confidence as, of course, they had Jimmy Butler. Uh, listen, I'd love to play Chicago. I'd love to play Miami. Little games be tough, man. Uh, It'll be reminiscent kind of, of the Hawks series I last year. I feel, like the, I feel like we usually, I mean, it's usually a close game in the fourth quarter. I feel like the last few times we've kind of we put it away. Bro, we um, but no, I think, like Drew said, I just I have faith in Spo. Um they had a really bad game offensively. Tyler Hero struggled. Duncan Robinson really didn't get a lot of burn. Of course, didn't have Terry Rozier. I capped. Um, smoke us all the time. Huh? I capped. Smoke. Yeah, no, in the fourth quarter, those games were low key close. So we were watching one at uh, I think it was the March Chelsea one? works. What's it fucking called Miller's? Huh? We was and we were fake. Yeah, we were, we were fake. fake. And then the fourth quarter, yeah. yeah. But I think the Heat win. Uh, I, I think Spo is gonna be able to to draw something up. I don't think the Bulls gonna score forty in the first quarter like they did again uh, last night. I don't know if Kobe White goes off for forty again. So I think the Heat win. I'm going with the Bulls. The Heat are demoralized. They just lost Jimmy Butler. It's over. It's over. Somebody the said, Bulls make the playoffs this time Somebody around. said the Celtics not losing a single quarter versus the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> In the Western Conference, we got the Pelicans versus the Kings. Pelicans without Zion. I'm going with the Kings. Kings came out on fire against the Golden State Warriors. And I understand that the Pelicans have been a great team all season long. But unfortunately, injuries are killing them at the absolute worst time possible. Even if they were to win this game, Zion's not getting reevaluated for another two weeks. And you just got Brandon Ingram back, and you saw his minutes restricted in the fourth quarter the way that they were versus the Lakers. I simply think that the Kings are just the more healthy team, and I think that's what it comes down to, unfortunately, for the Pelicans. I'm going with Sacramento. Yeah, the Kings got the momentum. I think they got the confidence. Everyone was taking the Warriors. I think all four of us took the Warriors in that Warriors-Kings game. Uh, like I said, I think that was probably, given the stakes, their best defensive game of the season, and I think they're going to ride that confidence into this game. I got the Kings. I'll um, go B.I. Masterclass. I'll go to Pelicans. Nice, nice. Not picking the Kings. No shot in hell. <laughs> I'm going with the Kings. I feel like this is one of those matchups that is actually perfect for Sabonis. I think Sabonis should have a great game. That's a good call. They didn't uh, talk about Sabonis as much as Fox. they should have against the, the Warriors. Game he went out there count. and he balled. <laughs> game really doesn't count. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox, he's going to have a tough time with Herb Jones on him. That, mm-hmm. that point of attack defense. I think the Pelicans are great defensively. But but I do think that Keon Ellis is one of those difference makers on defense. On the opposite side, to guard CJ or even Brendan Ingram. I think the matchups are mostly light, most likely going to be Keegan on B.I. Later. 
And then it's going to be Keon Ellis on CJ. I think those are great matchups. I expect the Kings to win it and get that eighth spot. Make the plus two years in a row, man. Who would have thought? Oh, two years in a row. So let's talk about the series that, you know, we all know the outcome to the Lakers versus the Nuggets. Uh, <laughs> Lakers versus Nuggets. The luck, the Lakers, indeed, were not ducking smoke. They want the smoke. And Davis came out and said, we want to face them. And you should. You know, this team has beaten you eight times in a row, I believe. You lost in the conference finals last year to them. Four row it was a sweep. It was a close sweep. Uh, listen, the Nuggets are going to win. Still no answer for Jamal Murray, who averaged wrong. almost 33 a game. It's wrong. In a conference finals. There is an answer. No answer for Nikola Jokic. That's true. And I don't like basing my prediction off of just head-to-head matchups, but you can't help but look at the Lakers and the Nuggets and their roster and just see that the Nuggets are better top to bottom outside of the LeBron James category. Why do you say that? At point guard, the Nuggets are better. Shooting guard, the Nuggets are better. Are they? Uh, yes, they are. KCP is he's better just than better than Reeves. KCP is better than Reeves. I'd rather have KCP. <laughs> Continue, please. KCP is an all, he's going to make like, all he, defense. He is all defensive. He's an awesome defender. Agreed. Jamal Murray, of course, we know that clears. Aaron Gordon versus who? Rui. Uh, Rui. Rui. Yeah, Aaron Gordon clears. Clears. <laughs> <laughs> he clears. Nikola Jokic versus AD. He clears. Clears. It just shows me. He just watch such limited amount of Lakers. So Le- LeBron is just over really MPJ. Like the, the Nuggets have favorable matchups everywhere, and then. Let's get what happened after we get out of that five man rotation. I don't think the Nuggets bench is that concerning. Peyton Watson, love him to death. Solid six, locked in. And Christian Brown. I mean, Christian he's a good Brown player. Solid. He is a good player. He is. Uh, Fred Jackson. Uh, you know, I I understand. <laughs> yeah, no, it's ugly. And the games that Reggie Jackson has started, Reggie Jackson has, or at least from what I remember, he has not been that good. Um, what's your prediction? Yeah, what is your prediction? Nuggets and... I got Nuggets I think in it's five. Pretty obvious, the Nuggets. I think uh, you guys probably get a game. I don't think you guys are going to get swept again. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, two teams, low-volume, three-point shooting teams, and I think to beat Denver, you have to have an advantage somewhere. We're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league. By percentage, but you don't take a lot of them. Your your volume is low. Uh, your, the Lakers are, I believe... 28th in three-point attempts. The Nuggets are 30th in the league. So both of you guys don't take a, a huge amount of three-point shots. I just feel like you have to have something. You have to have kind of like a reverse card where this is where you match up against Denver and you can get an edge. You shoot the three well. You don't shoot a lot of them. If you're not a high-volume three-point shooting team, I just don't see how you're going to have that edge. And you're not good defensively. So there's that. Um I agree with that point, actually, that we're not that good defensively. Unfortunately, when we lost Vanderbilt, we lost Christian Wood. We lost the backup for Anthony Davis. That was supposed to be one of our big additions. But I'll say this. Gabe Vincent's back. Gabe Vincent is back, and he played an actual amazing game against the Pelicans. I I look at this matchup compared to last year, and... Jokic himself said this was our hardest series by far. Did he say that about Minnesota too? Or no, no, that, that was, was Bruce, Brown. Bruce Brown, who's not on the team anymore. And actually, that's a part of my conversation. Also, Bruce Brown was one of the biggest parts of the Nuggets beating the the Lakers because he had the assignment of D'Angelo Russell, the the, the assignment that D'Angelo Russell eventually had gotten played off the floor, unfortunately, because he was struggling so much. Bruce Brown isn't on the team anymore. Uh, understanding that D'Angelo Russell is simply playing at a much higher level this season than he was last year. When we look at this, D'Angelo Russell, he just broke the franchise record for most threes made by a Los Angeles Laker. Austin oh, that. <laughs> I mean, that's, no, he's been cooking. I'm just I'm it's a franchise with you. record. That's that is impressive, especially when it's the Los Angeles Lakers. You look at Austin Reeves; he's objectively better than he was last season. Rui Hachimura, who was carrying that high from the playoffs into this season, when he starts, we've simply been one of the better teams. Forget about in the Western Conference, in the NBA, he's one of the most efficient players from both just the field and, of course, now the three point the three point range. Not the best of rebounders. Can do a job defensively, but not against Nikola Jokic. We saw that in our last matchup with them. We tried to start with Rui on, on Jokic and then kind of have AD hover. Terrible idea. I don't know how we're going to guard Nikola Jokic. But last time, LeBron James was unhealthy. Every game in the postseason, he was not healthy, but he was playing through it and playing relatively well, honestly. But now we're getting a healthy LeBron James. We have, now have at least 
two guards off the bench that can now fulfill any type of role defensively on a Jamal Murray in a Gabe Vincent and a Spencer Dinwiddie, whose minutes I don't love offensively, but defensively, he goes out there and does a job. Jamal Murray's Jamal Murray. He's going to get his, but I don't know if he averages 32 against us in, a, in another series. I, I, I just don't know if it's going to be as dominating as it was last time. And I say dominating because we lost four games. Even though the games were close, you got swept. You got dominated. There is a world where we can win. I do firmly believe that. I do firmly believe that. You don't have an answer for Jokic, but if you can limit Jamal Murray, oh, there's an actual avenue for the Lakers to win. And I'll die on this hill. Lakers in seven, will. slut. <laughs> oh, God, Drew, Lakers you Lakers in are, seven, slut. You know, I come down on a t-shirt. Drew, you're the most optimistic person I know, and that's one of your many great traits of your great personality. I appreciate that, bro. You're it an idiot. a lot to me. <laughs> yes. We'll see who's the idiot when the Lakers win. They'll have the most rest by far of any you, round. If it, there was ever a time to play Denver, what? it's right the fuck now. I think, Bring me Denver. I think LeBron I should him. send you and Nick Wright personal jerseys. Shout out to Nick Wright. Signed, he really cooked. Because you two, from what I've known, biggest LeBron fans, you guys will never, ever, ever doubt the king. Any series, yep, yep, any moment, definitely. I don't care what um, age. I'll take the game. I got Denver in five. Uh, I respect LeBron for him to get a game. I think last year they got swept. I do think they get a game. I can even see Denver in six. I think they make it maybe a little bit more difficult. I do feel like when it comes to Jamal Murray, I think you need bigger defenders on him. You know, I think he's one of those guys where you want lengthier guys, especially excuse Spence. me, in that type of pick and roll. Yeah, Spence is 6'6", but how much is he going to play if his offense isn't cooking? You know what I'm saying? He, he doesn't take too many shots, but it's not like he's a complete liability. No, no, he, he definitely isn't. He gets like two, three shots a game. You just got to knock down one of them. I do think Denver's cohesiveness, the way they just operate, their offense is so hard to stop. They have a counter for every single, like, like every single defensive scheme. Like, I don't think there's anything you guys can do. You don't have your wing defenders. You know, you're going into this series. Your offense has been, you know, it's been a kind of a flip. Your offense has been great lately. Your defense is kind of falling off a cliff a little bit. Um, AD against the Joker, not the best matchup. You know, it's like, it's just not the best matchup. And then, like I said, Denver just, it's just too many counters they have for defenses. Like, there's, there's just no way you can stop the Jamal Joker pick and roll, the Joker post up. Like, they're just one of the most efficient offenses, especially come playoff time. They know how to flip up the switch. I do have Denver. I'll say Denver in six. I think the, the series will definitely be competitive. I think, you know, I can see them going up 2-0. Lakers get one. They split in uh, L.A., then, you know, they finished off game six. So I, I got Denver in six, but I, I don't think you guys have a chance. I will be comfortable all series. You're telling me we split, they go and win no, two games No, I'm saying Denver in goes two in a row. Uh huh. Yeah, split in L.A. Oh, got it. Yeah, got so now it's 3 1. You win the game five because it's cool. Shit, and then game one. six, they end. History, man. Yeah. We love 3 1. Uh, LeBron does. Damn right. Not the others. So. I got I got Denver in five or six, too. It's, it's tough because this is probably personnel wise. In the West, probably the toughest matchup for Denver. If you're just looking at roster construction, what what LA can throw at Denver, what they can throw at Jokic, having Anthony Davis, although Jokic has had his way with him. Um, you mentioned Gabe Vidson, Spencer Dinwiddie. Um, I think decent decent defenders you could throw at Jamal Murray. I think they're they're fine defenders, but Jamal Murray in the playoffs is just so damn good. If you don't really have a top end Coming guy, off injury too, not at a hundred percent. That's fair. If you don't have a top end guy, I'm not going to feel a hundred percent confident. You know, at whoever you're throwing at Jamal Murray, and I don't think either of those guys are like elite top end level perimeter defenders, but I think they're both solid and you know decent enough looks when you have LeBron and when you have Anthony Davis on the back line. Um, it's just really tough to look at this Denver matchup and look at these last eight games. I'll, I'll tell you what, you're due. You're due for at least one. Oh, oh and eight in the last eight. I'll you're be damned due, if we get swept you're, you're again. You're due for at no least way. one. No fucking but way. But Denver, especially down in, in the stretch of games where, in my opinion, I don't know what the numbers say. I actually know the numbers say they're not the best clutch team in the NBA, but when it comes it to down like in the it. fourth quarter, it's just very hard to bet against them. I do think it's going to be a close series. I think these games are going to be close, just like we saw last playoff run. Having LeBron James at 100% changes things for sure. That's Absolutely. why I give you guys at least one or two games. Having LeBron, um, especially being able to shoot from three, coming off last series compared to this year where he's having his best three-point shooting season of his career at age 39. Shout out to him. And having some role players, like you mentioned, didn't have game bits in last year. Uh, Austin Reeves is probably better. Rui Hachimura, who um, has confidence, as you mentioned, had the confidence last series, but now has a whole season of that. Um, of course, just a whole another year integrating into the system. 
But at the end of the day, I think it comes down to really two things. It's Nikola Jokic, and I think it's the coaching difference. Darvin Ham versus Mike Malone. Mike Malone is a top two coach in the world. Um, Darvin Ham, unfortunately, is probably looking like the bottom five coaches in the NBA. Respect playoff Darvin, um, Jesus. Yeah, got swept last year. That was tough. But uh, shout out to the Lakers. By under- shout out to the Lakers. Whatever, I, think, I think it's going to make... Uh, I think it's going to make Denver work. I think this could be a bit of a grueling series. I think it could be a bit physical. But you got Nikola Jokic, man. I can't really bet against LeBron him. LeBron James. The Lakers and the Mavericks are tied for the most clutch wins in the NBA this year. Yeah. The Bulls are up there, too. What's their ranking? Uh, win percentage-wise, I think they might be number one. We are pretty high. We, oh, yeah? we yeah, kind of like thought the Lakers were let games one, go actually. into the fourth and then DeMar. Nice. I think offensive rating, they have number one. The Marvelous. I say that I understand where he's coming from, where we have been clutch. Fuck, we we've been clutch. Every game against us, it's us folding in the fourth against them specifically. It seems like every other game we play against any other team in that fourth quarter, we come correct against Denver. We can't figure it out. And then they just make tough shot, clutch shot after clutch shot. It's just so easy for them so to So I get understand good what looks. he's saying. It's so easy just putting Nicole Jokic around the free throw line somewhere in the mid range and just run something with either Aaron Gordon or two man with Jamal Murray another, and they just get a good look. Another thing we didn't talk about Jared Vanderbilt can return this series. That's going to be another body that we could potentially throw at, score, at, at Jamal. Get off the floor I understand that. But again, in minutes, where now we have three options that we can put on Jamal Murray. The three options being Gabe Vincent, Dinwiddie, is pretty, and, and Vando is pretty laughable. Gabe Vincent <laughs> is a good basketball player. It's Gabe Vincent against Jamal Murray. Is, yeah. he's, I think he's a solid he's defender. One job. He's a solid defender, but you and need And Spencer Dinwiddie, too, who's a good jobs. defender. Hit open threes if he gets them. And he can do that. And if, if my two defenders I'm counting on that are actually going to play like minutes for for real uh-huh. are Gabe Vincent and Dinwiddie, I don't like my And chances. also, of course, Austin Reeves. He's going to he's gonna inevitably play defense on him, and I don't love that. For sure. oh, that's Ramen. Mm-hmm. That's, what? <laughs> that's, that's Ramen. That's Ramen. <laughs> oh, that's Ramen. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting one. I like that one. Sixers versus Knicks. This, this is, is this is be interesting. interesting playoff series. It's not interesting to me. It it's is not interesting. Who, who do you, who you pick? I have Knicks in five. Yeah. I, 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 Knicks I, and five. Hey, you I, could go. You could look at out. Vegas. Vegas and earlier I've, today had Knicks at plus money even, to win this. I've series. been saying this for a, a while now. I just don't see how Philly matches up well with the Knicks. The Knicks defensively have all the options to guard a Tyrese Maxey, to guard a Joel Embiid, especially now that he's banged up. Philly does not have a ton of defenders to throw at Jalen Brunson. They just don't. And then when you have the the flamethrower that is Dante DiVincenzo, you have OJ, who is a really good shooter. OG? OG. Oh, oh, I'm tripping. I said OJ. Shout out to OJ, OJ, Shout out to OJ Simpson. Uh, oh, I was thinking OJ Mayo. He, he R.I.P. Yeah, yes. he did die, unfortunately. Um, you know, you don't want to see a guy die and nothing like that. But um, Some people oh, were happy. I, I, I peeped that. I'm not going to speak on that part. Mm-hmm. I will say OG is what I meant to Correct. say. And uh, he is a really good shooter. You know, you got Josh Hart, the hustle guy, who just likes to attack the rim with aggression. Then you got Tom Thibodeau versus Doc Rivers, a tale of two uh, guys who want to ring together in Boston, Doc being the head coach. Are you calling, are you Nick, calling Nurse? Nick Nurse Oh, Doc shit, Rivers? I'm trolling. <laughs> why not throw Doc it's, No, there? no, it's a Freudian slip because this <laughs> That's guy That's why I also thought he was fucking yeah, with us. Trolling the shit. Um, you got Nick Nurse versus Tom Thibodeau. Pardon me. I do like the defensive matchup between both guys. I do think Tom Thibodeau, he just offers so much. He can build, you know, an elite defense, especially in the playoffs. You know, I've seen it time and time again. I've seen it with this team. This is his third team that's had 50 wins or his second team. One of those. So shout out to Tom Thibodeau. Just what Jalen Brunson can do with his offense, his, able, his ability to get to the rim, create in the pick and roll, his ability to stop, his twitchy movements inside the arc. Like, it's just going to be hard to stop, when, especially when you got guys like Kelly Oubre, Nicholas Batum. You know, they're not the best defenders in the world. I know they're long, they're tall, but just not not those guys who you want. Like, you laughed at Gabe Vincent and Jared Vanderbilt. I mean, a 36-year-old Batum, Buddy Hill. Batum, Buddy Gabe Vincent and Jared Vanderbilt. Like, what are you fucking doing? No, I said I mean, with you, it. Yeah, you should laugh at these three because 36-year-old Batum is crazy. But I got the Knicks in five. I, I genuinely think... And beat is just not healthy enough. You got Mitch, you got Hartenstein, you got Precious, you got OG that can help. It's just going to be a hard matchup for Philly. So Knicks. I respect five him me. standing on business, though. I'm not going to be as bold as five. I still have the Knicks in this. I said it last show. I'm dying on whatever hill, whoever the Knicks were to match up, whether it was the Sixers versus the Heat or the Heat. Excuse me. I was going with the Knicks. I have Knicks in six. Similar reasons, other than the. I, I do look at the defensive matchups that he will be facing, whether it is Hartenstein and, or Mitchell Robinson. We're not getting Joel Embiid at 100%. And I think if he was at 100%, I would lean the other way because we've seen that they can play some high-level basketball. And credit to the Sixers who, against the Miami Heat, first half struggled, figured out in the second half, and Joel Embiid down the stretch played like the MVP that we 
are accustomed to or have been accustomed to seeing, of course, in the regular uh, season, haven't really seen it translate into the playoffs, but it was great to see down the stretch of a game him be able to elevate his level of play. But he healed as a, a certain aspect to that team. You saw him knock down some shots. You mentioned Batum, who I feel like people have been questioning. He's not. He's on the older side, but still can knock down some uh, a few shots. Tobias Harris, who's been inconsistent, but has been a pillar for them for these last few, however many seasons. Kelly Uber is another guy that can get a bucket. Maxi. We're going to talk about X factors in in a, in a couple segments. That's my X factor. You need him in this moment as your number two to play at that high level. But I just trust the Knicks on the other side so much more. They're just playing with so much consistency, so much togetherness. OG now in, in the lineup. You mix that with the way that Jalen Brunson has been arguably the best player in the Eastern Conference this season. To me, I say arguably because I still think it's Giannis, but people are trying to make that argument. You have Dante elevating his game the way that he has. Not eligible for MIP over minutes. or some. some you have to play a certain That's amount of minutes. Stupid. Nonsense. He definitely should have been in contention. You have Deuce elevating the way that he has. And then Hardenstein being all-NBA defender. Mitch being healthy at this point of the season. No Randall kind of sucks, but... I, th- I think you kind of live with it, understanding that he hasn't been the greatest playoff performer and the Knicks have elevated the way that they have as of recent and just played high-level basketball all year long and you're catching Philadelphia unhealthy. That's the big part. I'm going with the Knicks in six. Are you picking the Knicks too? I got the Knicks too. Oh, man, I really don't feel good about this. What, because we're all in the Knicks? No, yeah, I don't feel good about this at all. I The reason why I said the series was interesting is because I felt like everyone on Twitter, I, I tweeted out in the game, I was like, Knicks fans, how do you feel? Not a single Knicks fan, not that I was expecting it. We're saying like seven games or Philly might win. Everyone is picking the Knicks. And it was just interesting to see that when Vegas put their lines out, the Knicks were underdogs. I think that line has changed a bit. It's about even now. Knicks might even be slightly favored. But when that line first came out, I was surprised because we saw Joel Embiid just get banged up. He re aggravated that injury last game or second to last game of the season, set out the final game, came back against Philly, didn't look 100% right. I agree, though, Drew. If Embiid's 100% and he was playing like those first couple games back from injury, this is a seven-game series that could go either way. But Joel Embiid struggling the way he did against the Miami Heat for the first three quarters. The fourth quarter, he was able to come alive, hit some shots. The physicality that New York's going to play with against Joel Embiid, I'm worried about. If I'm a Sixers fan, Joel Embiid hit some some jump shots, hit some three-point shots. He had a couple. The, I know the broadcast going crazy. Like, how do you let him just walk into a three? I don't think the Knicks are going to let that happen. I think there's always going to be a body on him. It's going to be a pretty grueling a pretty grueling series. But more than anything, the Knicks have been the second best team in the East. You know, you can make the argument when Joel Embiid was on the floor for the for Philadelphia, they were what 31 and 8 or something before um you know, he went down, but even with the injury, through the injury, the Knicks have dealt with injuries, and they've been fantastic. As long as you're having Jalen Brunson and OG Ananobi out on the court, it's hard for me to bet against that team. I Like I said, I think they're the second-best team in the East behind Boston. You're catching Philly, who is a bit banged up, who I think a lot of people thought would possibly get that sixth seed and avoid either playing Milwaukee, Almost. Boston, or the New York Knicks. They did come close, and Deanna was able to secure that sixth spot. But right now, the Knicks are playing too good of basketball, and I think Jalen Brunson is going to be the best player in the series. I know Embiid is hurt, but even if he was 100% healthy. I think Chandler Bruns could still be the best Show player in this series. That's how damn good he's been this season. I don't give a shit. You're Jesus you're having Christ. arguably a all NBA first team type fair, performance with Jalen Brunson. MVP tour. He was by yeah. far and away the MVP. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've seen Joel Embiid play a lot of playoff series. Hasn't had, uh, hasn't had the most success. Had. He is hurt once again. Sorry. It's, it's upsetting. He hasn't been. But uh, I got Toronto. I got New York. I got New York in six. Actually, he might have been hurt then. So, you know, I really don't feel good that everybody's picking the Knicks. I got the Knicks in seven. I really think this is a toss-up series. Philly's going to be tough. This is a team that was on a 60-win pace with Embiid. This is one of the top teams in the East. And, you know, had Embiid not gotten hurt, this would have been probably the second seed in, in the East. There's no doubt in my mind. Embiid, the injuries have played a role in his playoff choking ways. There's no doubt. Also, what's played a role is that Teams scheme up for his deficiencies. Biggest weakness for him offensively is his passing ability. He's just that's, that's improved. It's improved because the schematics of the offense have changed. For sure. It, in years prior, he would have his back to the defense, so he kind of he wouldn't attempt passes blind. He wouldn't have that feel for passing the ball, and it would all, all almost always end up in turnovers and wrong reads. This year with Nick Nurse, he's playing out in the perimeter much more. So now his he's facing the defense so he can see things more. 
and that allows them to see where doubles are coming from and make quicker reads on those passes. I still think that it's a deficiency that could be exploited. Interesting. His passing ability, him playing on the perimeter much more this year, those dribble handoff actions he does with Tyrese Maxey, they love getting him out there in space. Sure. I don't think that we have to put Hart and Stein or Mitchell Robinson out there. I think, you know, OG and Anobi can be a frontline defender and we can have our bigs as um, roamers behind him. Because if Embiid is far from the basket, you know, OG, I think, is strong enough to hold, somewhat hold his own. And he's lengthy enough to contest shots out in perimeter uh, and so be Hart that. Or, uh, Maxi? I would put Hart, Dante on Maxi. I would kind of interchange between those two. I love OG as a defender, bro. I don't know how it goes against Embiid. I mean, it's not going to be every, every hold possession. his own strength wise. I don't know. The perimeter? Man. I mean, it's not going to be. It's saying. not going to be the position. It's not going to be like that every single possession. I know. I know. But it's. I'd rather my rim protector be protecting the rim. I don't, I don't disagree. Than be in space against Embiid, and now you're susceptible to back cuts, and you're susceptible to drives where you don't have somebody protecting the rim. So I feel like I'm interested in seeing who's going to get the initial matchup on Embiid when he's when he is outside. With Maxi, I really feel comfortable with the defenders we have, whether it's OG, Dante, Hart, Deuce McBride. I really feel comfortable in our defenders. Jalen Brunson, this is just a series where he's going to have to carry a load like he's had to carry all season long. Last year in the playoffs, what cost us is that we couldn't shoot the ball. And now we've improved much better as a shooting team, and that's going to be what we need to lean on this series. When Brunson gets into the paint, you know, penetrating and sucking in those players' paws yeah. and kicking it out for open three-point opportunities. That's what he needs to do. Make my worry my worry is that Make it juicy. with Love the it. Knicks, our it's offense is... On the court. Mel's getting salvaged. <laughs> with the Knicks, our offense is all Brunson or nothing. If we don't, if we don't have Brunson playing at a high level where he's going to slow down, yep. it's going to look really ugly for us. I, me- I mentioned the stat earlier in the show that 33% of the Knicks' possessions... A shot is taken with six seconds left on a shot clock or less. I think it's a that's a hard way to play offensive basketball. Brunson has been that good. With the Sixers offense, there's much more continuity. And their defense, although they're not going to have an answer for Brunson, uh, that's the only guy they have to worry about with our team in terms of creating off the dribble. So I think this is a toss-up series. Embiid probably first game, second game, third game. Do you think a hobbled Embiid is a toss-up series? Yes, because I think Embiid can, can still play at a high level year. hobbled. And I wouldn't even say he's... Did he take out a seven? No, nah, we, we trolled him. <laughs> and Harden had, he had to put on... Harden did have master. some master. But I mean, Maxi could have some master classes. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't, don't want to hear that we trolled and I think shit. Embiid, I think you guys are too I good. I, I, I just this don't thing, think we played that well I against think them. Embiid, it's not that he's just getting back now. You know, he's been back for a while, and he's been playing at a high level. Uh, I think against the Heat, he looked Horrible. very tired. He didn't look good. I agree with that. I think it'll probably take and be like one, two, three games to fully, you know, find a rhythm. But he can still play at a high level. You know, that shooting is still going to be there. That's You've never seen it. He has played at a high level. In the he, playoffs? Just, he just hasn't played at. The level that he should play at. So high level. No, I mean, the level he should play at is an MVP When level. has he played at a high level? You capped. No, I mean, <laughs> the, you, look at it, you look at his averages in the playoffs. I mean, he's playing at a at a pretty high level, like still an all-star level. It's not like he drops that's off a, that's, to like that's a That's an player. insane drop off. MVP to all-star? No, I know, but it's drop-off. still a high level. Like, that's still, like, if you play at an all-star level, it's still a high level. That's not a, that's not a high level for MVP. You can't do player. that when you're the, you're, you're the MVP. Yeah, you're the MVP of the league. It's not I mean, a high level. I mean, his best is probably 20, In 2020, 2021, yeah. he averaged 28. The year before that, in four games, he averaged that was, 30. That was the Boston series. You know, last two playoff series, he averaged 20, 24 and 24. You know, that's tough. That's, it's, that's a drop off. Yeah. And it's uh, his efficiency is terrible. Yeah. And in 2022, it was 48% from the field and 21% from three. And against the Heat, he looked year, terrible. He looked tired. He looked fatigued. And 18%. the Knicks are very aggressive. They're very physical. They're very aggressive. You're throwing two de- two elite defensive bigs at him. He's still hobbled. You can clearly see he's very much injured. And he tends to get tired throughout series. We've seen that before from him. 
if, and if you, Beach is going to be taking jump shots, if he's banged up and he doesn't have that low post. I mean, game, you saw when he was trying to take layups. He doesn't have that 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 same burst that he had. I don't know. That, that, that elbow free throw extended, that shot's usually water it is for not, Embiid. That's he loves that shot. I've seen him make it more often than not. But when you don't have as much of a threat of um, him driving, the, yeah, exactly, fair. putting the ball on the, uh, on the floor. I mean, Embiid against the Heat, 6 for 17, 2 for 4 from 3, 23 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists. And 13 of those points were in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I was going to say, before the fourth, there was, it was going to be some I, nasty I, I definitely think that Embiid is capable of playing a high I think Embiid's still. going to play well. What's I well? think that he's going to well play well. Is he averaging 30? But again, he's, he's being... Brother. I don't know. I don't think so, man. I don't think 30? so. 30? I think that's just asking a lot from him. I'm just saying he, he put up, he averaged 35 this year when he was healthy. Like when he, when he was healthy. I don't think he's healthy. I, I say I, I saw I a drop off 35 to 30. I envision him averaging like, 26, 27. But I think that assist will be up because he'll have, he'll be forced into situations where he has mm-hmm. to pass. I don't think that he's going to have a complete stinker. No. No. I don't think so. Like, like, th- like the whole series until time. Nah, Correct. nah. I don't, I don't think so, but I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, he plays well. They win the series. I don't, if he, he plays, no, if he plays at an MVP level, they if he plays well, correct. then the Knicks weren't. If he as good plays as we like thought. Joel Embiid can, ah, that's tough though because we've spoken about how when the 76ers are healthy, they're right up there with the best teams in the well. league. That's him playing at an MVP yeah, level, correct? So, so like, but if he just plays well, I don't think the Knicks were as good as we thought. In his last five games, outside of you know this, the, the playing game that he had. April 2nd versus the Thunder, 24 points in 29 minutes. He six k- rebounds, seven assists. He killed Orlando. Six for 14, 0 for 3 from 3, not the best efficiency. Played the Heat, 29 points, four rebounds, three assists. Against the Grizzlies, 30 points, 12 rebounds. Against the Pistons, 37 and 11. Against the Magic, 32, 13 and killed 7. I, Joel and B. That and B. Talk. Joel Embiid, I think, is still capable of playing at a really high level. But that Me was too. also the game. The Magic was the game he got. He re aggravated the injury, right? Because before that, he was but he came back, back from injury. But he came back. Yeah, but then he missed the last game. Maybe it was just for He nothing, came back that game. That game is what yeah. I'm saying, correct. Yeah. So I don't think it's as serious as... Uh, I don't know. He was he, hobbling yesterday, bro. No, he was... I think, looked, I think looked, it was more he so he was banged. gassed. He's just very tired. Yeah. Very I mean, tired. He did play the entire... Uh, essentially the entire... Almost the entire fourth. Yeah. You know, that's why I think by like the third game, he I mean, should he's gonna be... He's going to have to play good damn near the whole game against uh, the, the Knicks. I, mean, I, I think they'll, I think they'll he'll be logging in minutes. 38. He'll be they'll logging in 38, 40. Listen, I think the Knicks should win this series. But if 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 Embiid plays at the way that we know Embiid can play at, MVP Embiid, I'm not surprised if they win I this mean, series. I mean, the thing with the, the Sixers is that, yeah, I mean, all this pressure's on, on Embiid and, you know, Maxi has a secondary co-star. But something that they have much more of that they didn't have in years past is that they have better shooters. Yeah. You know, with Embiid... Even if he has a stinker, doesn't shoot that well. I mean, you still have to somewhat respect him and sometimes throw another body at him. Mm -hmm. And that's going to open up guys like Buddy Heald and Batum to get open shots and and play well, Tobias Harris. So I don't necessarily think this series is entirely on Embiid. I think this team is still good without him. And I I know you were talking a little bit about his passing and how it could be a deficiency. And that's fair in terms of previous Embiid appearances. But in the Heat game... His passing won the Sixers the game yeah, on top of Clark's defense, mm-hmm. but he was reading the defense excellently, hitting Batum perfectly, hitting Buddy Heald perfectly. His passing was the reason they ended up beating the Miami Heat. I anticipate that he keeps that same energy going into that Knicks series, and I'm picking the Knicks because they've shown it all season long. They've been the healthier team. I say healthier because they've gotten healthy at the right time. Also, though, in that Heat game, because the Knicks been banged up, of course. Their offense was dog shit. Terrible. And they could not hit a single shot. They and they couldn't a, generate any half-court possession. They need a Nick. But the so defense class. is great still. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm just talking about their offense. Yeah. The last that, point. What I mean in terms of he, he defense throwing yeah, yeah. against Philly's offense. He defense still great in its own right. The last point I'll make on this is that Embiid gets gassed. And that's with the, if you're facing a faster team, it's going to be worse. The Knicks are 30th in pace. Yes. yes. This is a, a team that's going to play a slow down style of basketball. And you can argue that plays to the advantage of Embiid because there is less potential for him to get gassed out if it's a slow, sluggish half court game. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I'm not going to count out the Sixers out. I, I really think this is a slug fest series and it could go either way. You know, this this to me feels more like a 4-5 matchup than a 2-7 matchup. Mm-hmm. Like, I think this is going to be such fair. a close series. Yeah. Playoff X factors for every playoff series that we know so far. 
Knicks versus Sixers, who's your X factor? X factor for me is going to be Tyrese Maxey. I already spoke about it a little bit. I say that because all the pressure, all the eyes are right now on Joel Embiid. But it's a different situation. We saw Tyrese Maxey play very, very well last year in the postseason when James Harden was picking and choosing when he wanted to be great. But now you have no choice. You have to be great because you are our second option. That's going to be my X factor for the Philadelphia 76ers. And my X factor for the New York Knicks is Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hardenstein, the bodies that they're going to be throwing at Joel Embiid. Because if these two guys can limit Joel Embiid, they handle this series relatively relatively easy but I don't think that'll be the case I still respect Joel Embiid's game even if he's not at 100% but the X factor is going to be that front court what can you do on the defensive side of the ball can you still stay at that play at that high level that you've shown all season long and of course Mitch who has kind of come back right right at the perfect time for you what how are you going to look is your body going to be in 100% shape for this series against one of the strongest guys in the game my oh oh, my fault brother ah let me go first you know what he's learning parks to be proud of you I agree with that, man. She'd be proud of you. My X factor for the Sixers, I'll go Maxi. I think he needs to have a a pretty super uber efficient uh, playoff series. I think he needs to be elite. I think you know, especially with Embiid being banged up, you know, him getting a prime like a lot of the attention. A matchup like OG Josh Hart. I think Dante is the weaker of the guys. I think I would rather have Deuce before Dante as a defender. You know, but I think Maxi in terms of just handoffs, transition, you know, being efficient from the three-point line. He needs to be that guy. And for the Knicks, my X factor wasn't a specific person. It was just the others. Because I think Josh Hart, OG, Dante DiVigen, there's just going to be so much pressure on Jalen Brunson. I expect a lot of blitzes. I expect a lot I expect a lot of double teams, you know, trying to get the like ball that. out of Brunson's hands. And with that being said, there's going to be shots for Dante. There's going to be shots for Hart or drive lanes for Hart. There's going to be opportunities for OG. Are you guys going to step up to the plate to give Jalen Brunson that help that he needs so you can get through this series? So those are my X factors. Now I don't know where to go. I'm sorry, Dallas, because, you know, you, I, I thought. Yeah, because usually it's boom, 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 you, and then it went this way, so I don't know. You know, you lost your spot, buddy. <laughs> you go so, last. Uh, my X factor for this series is Kelly Oubre. I think uh, the Sixers. I don't mind that. Need a defender on Brunson. It's not going to be Tyrese Maxey. Batum could do it in spurts, but he's older, doesn't have oh, the agility no. of Oubre. I think Kelly oh, Oubre. What the fuck is Batum in? <laughs> Kelly Oubre is the Sixers' best shot at containing Brunson because he's the most athletic wing mm-hmm. on the team. So I think he's the X Factor, and I didn't have an X Factor for the Knicks. Um, I'm just having an X Factor for this series, and I, I just have an X Factor for the series, and I think Kelly Oubre has the potential to turn around this series. Mine's mine's similar. My X factor was what's Nick Nurse's game plan to contain Jalen Brunson. Um, I think you move off Doc Rivers and hire Nick Nurse for these type of moments because we've seen the last few years, well, really last kind of decade with Doc Rivers. He's underperformed in the playoffs, and you think of Nick Nurse, you think that Raptors team um, being able to come together and have such an elite defense. I think this is why he was brought to Philadelphia to kind of construct a game plan to be able to slow down Jalen Brunson this season when Brunson has played Philly they played four times he was held to 21 or less points in three of those games two of those games he shot under 30 percent in the field um I, I mentioned it before I don't think you can go to the extent of what Mike Brown did against the Warriors because the Knicks just have better shooters and better players period but if I'm if I'm uh Nick Nurse I want to throw bodies at Jalen Brunson I want to make him uncomfortable if Dante and OG and Josh Sharp they've been phenomenal this season if they go out and they're combined for 50 60 points a night I'm going to have to live with that because I don't want Jalen Brunson to control this series and continue what he's done in March and April, averaging fucking, what, 28, 30-plus points per game. So I think if Nick Nurse is able to have some sort of elaborate plan to contain Jalen Brunson, make him uncomfortable like they have earlier in this season, that that gives Philadelphia a great chance. Let me ask, is he still brand name Doc? Yes. Yes. I just don't understand the logic I don't get it, it either. Yeah. He's under. He's overachieved a shit ton, Nick Nurse. So is Doc Rivers. His first season as a head coach was overachieving. He hasn't blown as much. Making the Clippers go to the playoffs in 2019 was overachieving. I mean, he's overachieved too. Has he underachieved or overachieved more? That was an overachieved. Who cares? Cook, cook, cook. Has he underachieved or overachieved more? Has he choked more or overachieved more? You can argue a bit of both. You can argue. No, no, but which is more? With the Sixers. I mean, there's been some of both. With the Sixers. With the Clippers? With the Sixers. As soon as he got to the Sixers, he made them the first seed in, in the East. And then what did they do? I mean, Joel Embiid choked every fourth quarter against the Hawks. What about that the Clippers? Him. The Clippers, no, you got it. But still, but damn near their I whole. I mean, Paul George, time. Paul George in a bubble didn't show up. 
Kawhi Game 7 him, didn't show up. But he also didn't show up as a coach. He had okay, Montreal but his Harris players didn't there. show up as a coach either. The yeah, play, but he the players also chokes. He chokes with them. Okay, but the players, they've been active. They've been They were up 3-2 against the Celtics, bro. No excuse. Jo- Jason Tatum was garbage until the fourth quarter. They should have won that game. They should have won the, the series. Game 7 masterclass Jason Tatum had. I'm not talking Game 7. You should have closed it in 6. Yeah, yeah, but get it, on your home court. Why didn't no you excuse. close it in 6? Because Joel Embiid was dog shit. And so was James, James Harden. Harden. Tatum had like 16 points. They were, yeah, James, Tatum was Anthony Melo. James Harden and Embiid were ass in the fourth. They were garbage. <sighs> How does that fall on Doc Rivers just because his players are ass? Listen, sometimes superstar players make superstar plays. That's what Jason Tatum did. I don't know about that. He like the, the one terrible. ring Nick Nurse quarter. has is because the Warriors were hurt. Let's the one ring. Get that straight. Hold on. Wait a minute. Well, pause. <laughs> Doc has a ring from damn near 20 years ago. Okay. It's still a ring. They were a super team. They played the Lakers. Yeah, but I'm saying, but they were a super team. He got a ring because they built a super team. They built a great team for sure. No, 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 no. That was a super team in that era. Let's, <laughs> that not, was, let's not, not do that. Let's okay, not do but that. the Lakers, two years later, with a similar roster, they beat them I, I don't in get, seven I, games. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. Yeah, but Doc Rivers, okay. In Boston, you win a championship your first you year. Win you win get, You get put together. Your second year, KG gets hurt. And yes. that's why you don't go back to the finals. I'm not even bringing up so that. So that's the season that could have went back. They were up 3-2 on the Lakers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. And listen, it's Kobe Bryant. It's one of the greatest players ever. It's Kobe, Kobe didn't Bryant. even play that well in Game 7. It was Kobe Bryant test. played exceptional. He didn't shoot the ball well. He played exceptional that game. He had He's like 17 scorer. rebounds. But Kobe Bryant's defense was elite. That game was oh, was a slugfest. That game was like in the 50s. Look at in Riv. Yeah. Look at Riv. It's also like 2000. What are you looking at me for? That's, I don't know. I'm not, I just said he didn't shoot well. He, he did. He did it. He did it. No, just objectively. No, he speaking. said he didn't play well. That's what he said. Uh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. Ron Artest was a game. He's a savior. He, he, his like, main attribute is his scoring. He's known he's for being also, the greatest scorer. He also though. has 10 plus all defensive teams, though. He's an elite defender, too. He does more things on the court than just score. He was great that game. The goal is to score, man. What he did, what he did as a rebounder and defender that No, credit that to him. He, awesome. he, he had his extra Yeah, but you ain't telling me that out. he didn't shoot well. You told me he didn't play well. Yeah. He okay. did play well. Objectively, though, with, with what his main attribute is scoring, I'm sure he would come to you and say, I didn't play well. No, he didn't shoot well. He played well, though. <laughs> Kobe would tell <laughs> you he didn't play Correct. well. He, he would say well. he didn't play well. I mean, that game, game seven, it was in the 50s in the fourth quarter. That was, even for the era, a low-scoring game. Yeah, for sure. And everybody struggled mm-hmm. that game, that essentially. Game. Paul Pierce, 5 for 15. Ray Allen, two, 3 for 14. Nasty game. I mean, everybody. Uh, Kobe Bryant went 6 for 24, but he went 11 for 15 at the line. He had 15 rebounds, 23 points still. Like, I mean, he still played a pretty good game, that game seven. They won the championship because of how Metal great Ropey, that out. team was defensively. I'm All just right. talking shit, man. Who made that pass? No, oh, shout out Kobe. Right. What's the next series we got? Um, what did what did you say, Riff? But before we got into this whole Kobe tangent, um, oh, about Doc Rivers. I mean, listen, he's Nick definitely Nur- choked more than he's achieved. Fact. I think you could say the same thing for most coaches. Not Nick Nurse. NBA. What about Nick you Nurse? Not say that about Nick Nurse. You can't. You, there's only one year that he did something. What? Relevant. The year after. One year that Doc Rivers has done something. Did relevant. he not do the year after where the Raptors were a top three team in the East? And Why do you act like Doc went, Rivers they were has the this second seed career. in the East and they didn't make the ECF? They lost in the they second. Had his round. best player was Pascal Siakam. Yeah, and they were the second seed in the East. Didn't that that's overachieving as as and hell. They didn't live up to the expectations. They went to, y'all? they went to seven. Seven with y'all. Yeah, and they lost. Bubble, you saying? Yeah, they lost to Boston and they lost. They lost to Boston. Like the only reason Nick Nurse has a ring is because. He faced an injured Warriors team. That's why. So what, though? What do you mean, so what? It matters. They went up 3-2. I'll be honest. With everything they did in that East, I don't even care. They beat the Bucs, and they went through Philly. So that they, was a if they tough lose, Philly If they team. lose to the Knicks here, it's an underachievement? No. How does no. Embiid look? Is it, if Embiid's 100%? I don't think Embiid's healthy. If Embiid's, so, so if Nick Embiid's Nurse putting you 30 the, a night, that's the point. So Nick Nurse gets the excuse <laughs> of if, if Embiid's not good, it's not his fault. But Doc Rivers, Embiid was not good for him, and he don't get that excuse. Some bitch cooked. I don't. Come I don't on. think we all. We none of us blamed Doc Rivers last year. Ah, uh, you're up three two on your home court. Figure it out, man. I, I just like you. You. You, you, you got wa- the player. The players got to figure it out. You're watching Tatum go heaters, and I. I feel like he was in single coverage the whole time. I don't think he threw game many. seven. No, no. I'm game talking about seven, game six. No. I'm talking about game six. When you see Tatum, I'm heating up, Doc. No, game seven. There was absolutely nothing. Could no, be done. no. But you had game six on your home floor, fourth quarter. I understand your two best players. There goes are like, that man. Where are you? There goes that man. Hey, that what man can you do? Mid. And Wells is a great Tatum that game, 19 points, five for 21, four for 11. For 16 three. came in the fourth. I know. <laughs> All of them I know. Came in the fourth. But he was on his way to 
the worst, one of the worst off seasons we'd ever know, seen. And B, 26 points, not for Save 19. Legs, he like oh, hell. Harden shot four for 16, 0 for 6 from three. Unbelievable. 13 one of the best points, players 10. in the world. Harden's hard. I mean, and then Tyrus Maxey was nine for 20, three for nine from three. I mean, it's, a good game. it's not all, it's not like. His players played well, and then in game what did, seven, what they did didn't MB show up do? at all. Nine for 20 is not well. Nine for 20 is a good game. What, what did MB do? I'm, I missed that first part. 26 and something. Well, I need to know the officials. MB was nine for 19. That's, that's, a, that's a good, good game. That's less than 50% from okay. the field for a seven. You just said Kobe played that. No, 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 bro. That's a good game, bro. And Embiid was probably, he was elite that series defensively. Let me look at these fourth quarter stats. <laughs> Come on, man. No, no, because it matters. Does it not matter? Joel and B, three for six in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Solid. Six points, but minus 10. Harden was 0 oh, for 4. Okay. Tyrese Maxey was 1 for 3. So we're, let's really point the finger at James Harden. Yeah, Bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bum. Well, yeah, I know. James Harden under points and clubs. That's not new. So of two of your too. three of the big three played solid ball. Jason Tatum was having a disaster class until the last, let's say, five minutes of the game. Let me ask you, the Sixers last year had personnel to to play defense like that? Mm, Tobias is not the worst defender I've ever seen. He's a below average defender. You know, Kobe was a a flat minus, plus minus in game seven. I know. I know. It was a four point difference. I'll be honest. Does plus minus really move you like that? It doesn't. He just brought it up. I just don't care about plus minus at all. It's irrelevant to me. It matters a little bit. It definitely matters. It's definitely one of the weaker stats. Definitely matters. I know, but Kobe Bryant, he played well in game seven. That was one of the. He went six for 24. That was one of the biggest slugfests. Didn't Carl Anthony Towns have 60 points and his plus minus was also. Defensively, he got benched in the fourth quarter. Defensively, he was just giving up buckets. I don't think his plus minus was bad, though. He got benched, though. Yeah, he did get benched. Nick Nurse. Get benched. Let's see him real quick. Shout out to Nick so you don't think it's an underachievement if, if they lose with Embiid? If Embiid looks Embiid great, looks right. yeah, we could talk about Nick Nurse. If Embiid looks great, sure. Nick but Nurse if Embiid t- plays bad, Nick Nurse don't get no blame. It depends, though. Is he hurt? Is it obvious? Did is it visible? Because wasn't well, he hurt last year? Embiid has been hurt every time with Doc. And we, we give Embiid the pass. A- outside of Doc guess, also gets shit for the Clippers too, though. It's not just Philly. Yeah, but he was with the Clippers one year with Kawhi and PG. And it wasn't one. All it was the, two. With Kawhi and PG. Oh, yes. yes with so. Kawhi and PG was just one. And all of the players that have played on the Clippers, mostly all of them, they have vocally come out and said, we didn't want to be there. They all quit on themselves in the series. Is, is that in not a level. reflection of the coach? Well, a coach can only do so much. But isn't like part of being the head coach? To is rally to the kind of, yeah, exactly. A coach can only do together. so much, and it was a pandemic that happened, and they were in. Everyone was in they the were, pandemic. I know, but they were in Disney, and they couldn't see their families, and they were under restrictions. Nick, they the didn't want to be there. Every the team there was. was. I know, and that's that. They didn't. The Clippers didn't want to be there. If you remember, yeah. they had a vote on if you want to leave or stay in the bubble, the and the that. whole Clippers voted that they wanted to leave. Nick Nurse, they didn't want to be there. First year, 58 wins. Second year, 53. Third year, 27. Fourth year, 48. Fifth year, 41. Now, 47. I can guarantee you his best player wasn't a top 20 player most of these years. Maybe four of them out of six. Pascal was all NBA. I, but you know, some years he was definitely top 20. Maybe one. Top 20. One or two. Top 20 is probably or two. strong. Top People get hurt. One or two. And I'm a Pascal guy. And you know, all NBA is positions. It is. Look at the team that Doc Rivers made the playoffs with his first year as a coach. You mean 20 years ago. In actually. Orlando? What do you mean? That's that's when he first started. In Orlando, that yeah, team but was this, ass. And it's it's also just such a long man. time ago. Yeah, but then he went to the Sixers, and then he made them the they first season. 41 and 41. Yeah, but look at the do roster. Do you think Steve the Kerr is still an elite coach? Steve Kerr? Do you think he's an elite yeah, coach? I think he's still an elite coach. Just, just asking. I think he's still an elite coach. Rev, do you think he's an elite coach? <laughs> I think I think maybe he, he might have had he, a he uh declined a little bit. I think he might have had a bad season, but I also feel like there's not many coaches that could have got this team to a title contender, or one of the best teams. The Warriors? Oh hell no, no no no. You know I feel but like there was I feel also like there's deficiencies, a lot of blatant mistakes that he's made. No, it's a lot of it's a lot of rookie mistakes he yeah. made. Bucks versus Pacers. Oh thank God. My X factor is T.J. McConnell. I think we'd ever get here. Okay. T.J. McConnell, uh, post All Star break. When he's on the floor, the Pacers have their best lineup net rating wise over Tyrese Halliburton. And I think the starters, if, especially if Giannis is not playing, the starters with the Pacers and the Bucks, they could probably clash and cancel each other out. But it's that bench unit 
off the bench, what are you getting? What are the Bucks getting off their bench? I think TJ McConnell gives the Pacers a steady dose of what they can expect for a point guard running the show. He is a very good scorer. He's a very good playmaker, initiator. He's a pesky defender. And I think he's somebody that could turn this series over. Max Spector's Aaron Neesmith. I think he's been probably their best perimeter defender on the season. When the Pacers win games, he shoots 48% from three. When they lose, he shoots about 32% from three. So he has a huge swing in the game. Of course, you're going to have to have Tyrese Halliburton and uh, all the other dudes, Pascal, show up. But Aaron Neesmith wouldn't surprise me if he draws the Dame matchup. Like I said, I do think he's their best defender. Um, and with Giannis, it, it seems like it's more trending towards he might miss the whole series compared to at least the first two, three games possibly. At least that's what Shams was reporting. Um, Aaron Neesmith is going to have to be huge for this team on both sides of the ball. My X factors are going to be the point guards of both of these teams. It's going to be on Damian Lillard. You were traded to the... Milwaukee Bucks, one, because you wanted to compete, and two, because Milwaukee needed a co-star next to Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now Giannis is out injured. This is your time to carry and show why you are still one of the best guards in the game. Now I look on the other side. Tyrese Halliburton is going to be my X factor for the fact that he struggled pretty terribly for for the Pacers post-All-Star break, averaging 17 points, 45% from field, but the kicker here, 30% from three. We've always known Reese to be an efficient three-point shooter, and now this is your first taste of the playoffs. I need to see what you're made of this is your first series especially where you have some animosity towards the bucks you have a winning record versus the bucks this season but now it's playoff time are you going to allow Damian Lillard to get the better of you like he was talking about earlier in the in-season tournament are you going to rise to the occasion get rid of that whatever has been post all-star break whether you were struggling or not you treat it like it's brand new Tyrese Halliburton was in top five point guard conversations to start this season, and he struggled tremendously since returning from injury. But now's your time to re solidify yourself and have people put respect back in your name. Do you have him at five? Four? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he's not even top five? No, no, no. So your X factors are Dame and Tyrese? Correct. Okay. So whoever wins this series, you're putting them over. Uh, this is the this is the position spot. Shit, man. Low key. I don't know if it's top five, but no, more, just the position. Yeah. position. Now, so who was your, your Ernie Smith? Ernie Smith. For me, it's uh, Doc Rivers. <laughs> like, okay, that's a really great Doc Rivers. Doc. Listen, man, you're going with the coaches these these last two. Yeah, yeah. I think I think for the Pacers, it is Halley because I feel like this was a favorable matchup for him early on in the year. Like he really loved this matchup. He played impressive in this matchup. He um, dominated Dame on the other end, and I think with this defense and the type of def- defensive deficiencies they have, I think he can have a great series. For for me, it's Doc because I think with Giannis trending on missing the series, you're going to need a A-plus coaching job in this series to really put this team to the best ability to get this win. I know, of course, you need Dame to play excellent, but you also need to put this team in positions to win, get the defense to buy in, offensively create better sets. And against this Indiana defense, you should definitely have fun. So Doc Rivers and Halley is my uh, X-Factors. Cavaliers versus Magic. I was split between Garland and Jonathan Isaac, and I leaned with Jonathan Isaac. Oh, so you only just won one player each series. So did I. Yeah, just one player that I feel like can flip the series. All right. You can turn the momentum of the series over. I think Jonathan Isaac is one of those guys. You know, Jonathan Isaac, if his his defense can really suffocate Donovan Mitchell yeah. or Darius Garland, mm-hmm. and he's one of those guys that he, he can change and turn around an entire game plan for us. We're under similar thought process because one of my X factors for this series for the Cavaliers is going to be Darius Garland. I said this last year when he was playing against the Knicks, you you felt like Donovan Mitchell was going to do his his part, but you understand you need Garland. And the one game that Garland really went above and beyond was the one game that they ended up beating the Knicks in. So I, I look at this series and understand the matchup for the Magic is probably going to be Jalen Suggs thrown on Donovan Mitchell. And Jalen Suggs is going to be my X factor for the for the Orlando Magic. How good of a job are you going to do on Donovan Mitchell? And are you going to continue to be the efficient shooter that you were in the regular season? They lack those. A lot of shooting. And he's one of the few that is pretty efficient from three-point range. I definitely understand your thought process on Jonathan Isaac too, but it's going to be between the guards for me. Is Garland going to play at this high level where we've seen him be very inconsistent for a majority of this season? And are you going to rise to the occasion now that it's playoff basketball? Are you going to be the co-star that everyone says you are to Donovan Mitchell? And Jalen, are you going to continue to be this all-NBA defender that I am anticipating you to be, especially playing one of the, the better offensive players in the league, or at least this season, in Donovan Mitchell? My expector is also Jonathan Isaac, specifically Jonathan Isaac getting some center minutes. They kind of toured with that in the last game of the regular season. Um, it was also the first time since 2019 he played 25-plus minutes in back-to-back games. So they're ramping him up for the playoffs. This is the healthiest he's ever been. 
And we know if he would have played 65 games, absolute lock for all defensive first team, you can make the argument he's the best defender in the NBA with his versatility, being able to protect the rim, being able to guard on the perimeter. I mean, shit, you could say he could uh, shut down Donovan Mitchell. He could also go up against Evan Mobley, right? His versatility is unmatched. So um, I think Jonathan Isaac being able to really put him all over the court, use him as a chess piece. And if he could start playing about 30 minutes per game, this is why one of the reasons why I picked the Magic in this series. They played the Cavs four times this year. And the two wins they had Jonathan Isaac and the two losses they didn't have him. Uh, for me, Cavs, I'll go Evan Mobley. I think he'll have one of the toughest matchups. He'll be the one, I believe, checking Boncaro. You know, I think that's their number one guy. That's their initiator. That's their offensive creator. And I think to take him out of a series would really help Mobley. And I also think they'll probably split Mobley and, Ali, at Mobley and Allen center minutes. So I think Mobley really needs to be huge down there for them also offensively. He kind of had a little stretch late in the year where he started to shoot more threes. And it wasn't a ton, but some corner threes. Hit a little bit. Hit, hit at a small clip to where it looked like it could be respectable down the line. So if he can do that this series, that would be great. For me, the magic is a totality thing. I think it's the bench. I think the bench has to play amazing. I think that'll, that'll be the move that they can make to win this series. You know, you got Cole Anthony, you got Goga, you got Jonathan Isaac, you got these guys coming off the bench. I think the starters are going to be slightly outmatched, but I think this bench can really tilt this series. If they can go in, they can outperform the Cavs bench. So those are my X factors. The Nuggets versus the Lakers, I think we all pretty much are picking the Nuggets to win. They're the favorites to win. But if this, if, yeah, no, he, Lakers in seven. Uh, but if there is a way that the Lakers can make this series more competitive, it's going to be because of D'Angelo Russell. Yep, yep. He's the biggest X factor in the series. Easily. I think uh, he was so bad last year for them that if you're just getting him at his normal level of play, this could be a tough series, a tougher series for Denver. I believe I saw when we win, he shoots 45% from three, but when we lose, he shoots 35%. I mean, that makes sense for me, honestly, because D'Angelo Russell is one of the keys to our offense. And I said this to you in the car when we're on our way here. You're right. That's the perfect answer. It's D'Angelo Russell. I don't anticipate him to play as poorly as he did last season against the Nuggets in the playoffs. But this season, especially given how much better he has been and the fact that there is not a real consistent option for the Nuggets to throw at him unless they go and they put Payne Watson out on him on a consistent basis. But I'm not too sure about that one. I just anticipate D'Angelo Russell being that guy that is going to be our number two on some games nights, being our number two option to score the basketball. And if he's not efficient, we may not have a chance to win this one. I had D'Lo as well. Um, Sweet answer. I think, I think the other one, though, the other name I had was Darvin Ham. Um, you know, Jesus looking Christ. back. He's going to be fine. Not worried about him. Looking back at last season or the last playoff series these two teams had, game two, the Lakers get outscored 32-24 to 24 in the fourth, lose by five points. Game three, they get outscored 35-26 to 26 in the fourth quarter, lose by 11 points. Game four, fourth quarter was close, only a three-point difference, but they got outscored 36-16 to 16 in the third quarter. So those second-half adjustments, finding what's working on offense, what's not working, trying ways to limit what – um, Denver's doing offensively and kind of trying to get them into their worst tendencies, although they don't have a lot of bad tendencies. Darvin Ham has to, you know, really be on point if they want to win the series. Mine's is also Dar- uh, D- D- low. Timberwolves, Timberwolves versus Suns. It's Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill's the X. That's factor. the easy answer, also. A Kevin Durant is going to be guarded by Jaden McDaniels, Devin Booker, most likely Anthony Edwards. Beal's going to have that matchup against Conley or the third worst defender of Cats the bunch. And, switches. Mm-hmm. and he's the one that, if he plays really well, it's going to be tough for the Wolves to contain him. My answer was Bradley Beal also. He's been playing at a very high level recently also. But on the opposite side, I look at Carl Anthony Towns. How are you going to look from returning after injury? We, we all know that the Minnesota Timberwolves need his offensive input. You've seen Nas in his absence be able to step up to the plate and handle that. But Cat's at that next level above. And so I do anticipate, well, I, I am looking for for Carl Anthony Towns to go out there and un- understanding he is coming back from injury, but you are essential to the Minnesota Timberwolves winning this series if they were to do so. And understanding that defensively, that's always been an issue for them, especially when the Suns match up against the Timberwolves. Timberwolves haven't been able to beat them this season and won every game by double digits. If Carl Anthony Towns can go out there and be dominant and and put some type of resemblance of defense out there, I think Minnesota can still handle this. But it is on the shoulders, and it does kind of go on Carl Anthony Towns. Mine's similar. It's the secondary score for the Minnesota Timberwolves, whether that's going to be Carl Anthony Towns, whether that's going to be not. Reed. Anthony Edwards is going to go out there. He's going to give it his all. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me. He averages damn near 30 this series just because I think they're going to need him to do that offensively because, as Drew mentioned, Cat coming back from injury, we don't really know what to expect from him. And Nasreed has been so fantastic 
you know, since really all season, but especially once Cat went out to fill that starter role. And I think going up against the Suns, this is a series you could probably start both Cat and Nas Reed for some minutes. Of course, Gobert is going to be starting and probably close in some instances, but when you need offense, you need the offense to get going, I think you get away with starting both of those and really having your best five offensive players on the court. I think for me, it's going to be Bradley Bill, of course. I think he'll be able to get some favorable matchups. And I think... With Kevin Durant and Devin Booker being occupied by their two best POA defenders, you'll need Beal to kind of take advantage of the fact that Mike Conley's small. He is up there in age. Maybe get a cat and switches. You know, I think Beal and playing like later in the year, he started to play really well. I think for the Timbs, it's kind of the the shooting big man tandem of Nas Reed of Cat. I think this is a series where the Suns aren't too big. You know, I know Kevin Durant; he's an elite defender. He's seven feet, but. Doesn't have that same muscle with Cat. And I think if Cat, Nas Reed play bully ball, they get physical, they kind of get in the paint or they kind of stretch out, they just find those matchups where they can exploit. I think this can really turn into a game changer series for the Timbs. The last series, Clippers versus Mavericks. It's Russell Westbrook for me. Okay. I understand your thought process. Uh, for the defensive purposes, I'm assuming on Kyrie Irving. be easily Kawhi's name. That, I was still leaning Paul George. I say, yes, it has to be Paul George because you don't know if Kawhi's going to be at 100%. Well, if Kawhi's at 100, they're not winning the series. Uh, but that's a fact. No. But under- Yeah, no no doubt about it. You don't think twice about it. But understanding, oh. he's still going to play. Let's say, if he's still playing, I still look at Paul George that he has to either compensate for an injured Kawhi Leonard or be the perfect counterpart to Kawhi Leonard that we were all anticipating you to be when you first decided to come to to Los Angeles. It's unfortunate we haven't seen both of them be able to stay on the the floor and click at the same time come playoff time where we saw Kawhi get injured the year that they went to the WCF. I feel like that's the closest we got. But then Paul George was able to take it up a notch once Kawhi was injured. You need to be that perfect counterpart to Kawhi. And understanding that you've been trying to clear your name of playoff allegations, this is your series to do so, especially with Kawhi not at 100. I have Russell Westbrook because there is no person on the Mavericks that can match him off the bench. Mm -mm. He is the best player off the bench. And if James Harden is not playing well, Russell Westbrook can also start, and he can be a great defender on Kyrie Irving, I think specifically because of his size and speed. Russell Westbrook, we just seen him in the playoffs last year when Kawhi went out, Paul George was out. He had his best series in a long time. And if you get that high level of play from Russ, I mean, you can argue he's been our X factor all year long. I agree. Because when he went out, they missed the energy. So I think Russell Westbrook to me is easily the X factor this series. I I think for me, it's of course Kawhi's uh, injured knee. If I wanted to go a separate way, I'd go James Harden because I think he's the guy that can really tilt this series. You have PG, you have Kawhi, you have Kyrie, you have Luka. You kind of expect Luka and Kawhi to play up to their uh, expectations. PG and Kyrie are the guys kind of, you know, iffy, iffy, but PG lately has played better than Kyrie in the playoffs. But so you expect those two to match each other. It's Harden. I don't think they have a third guy that can give you what Harden can give you if Harden plays up to his potential. You know, same thing with Westbrook off the bench. I think if Harden gets back into that gear, he becomes that guy, then this team really becomes dangerous. And I think Dallas, I think it's Lively. I think Gafford is a great rim protector, but I think Lively has the foot speed. He's a lot more taller. He, I think he has the ability to guard better on the perimeter, guard better, and switch his guard better in space just because his length, his tallness, like the way he can just extend his arms. I think Gafford is a little bit smaller in that department. And they're going to need one of these bigs to play that because I know small ball is the Clippers, uh, you know, that's their – reputation they love it but I think for Dallas their best attribute is keeping one of these bigs on the floor and I think it's going to end up being lively my X factor is Derek Jones Jr. I think he's the best perimeter defender Dallas has um, in terms of b-ball index perimeter isolation defense uh, Derek Jones Jr. ranked eighth this, eighth this season Riv you told me I wasn't prepared I have the top seven best perimeter defenders in the NBA what, this year what, can what, you tell what, me what do you want it what do you want b-ball it? index sweet did you pay for it uh, tweet I think we might have Alex Caruso. Alex Caruso is number two. Okay. Drew Holiday? No. Eric White? Uh, No to both. What? Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels is number Jalen Suggs. Three, four, five. No. Not Suggs. That was definitely going to be a name I was going to say. It's a top seven. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Isaac? No. Perimeter? Jonathan Kaminga? No. Oh, man. How many do we have? Takes tough assignments. You You guys said, uh, who did you guys say? Jaden McDaniels and Caruso? Caruso, yes. What is this stat exactly? Um, perimeter isolation defense. Drawley? 
No, no. neither was Derek White either. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown was going to no. be who? Wow. Drew Holiday. I just said you that. You guys now. can't be dead ass <laughs> three times. <laughs> Isaac Okoro. No. Oh, really? Oh, KCP. No. Okay. We're, we're naming some pretty hollow there, defenders. There's a couple gimmies in here that I'm surprised you guys haven't said yet, and a couple ones that I'd be surprised. No. Lou Dort? Yes, Lou Dort's number one. Best perimeter isolation defender in the NBA. SGA? No. J-Dub? No. Nikhil Alexander-Walker? No. Anthony Scoop Edwards? Scoop no. It. Good. Please be serious. Um, we got a big man in here or no? No big man. No big man left. Know. You got... So not either. Three, really, you got one vet, three young players. Vet, he's younger, but, you know, been in the league for years. Paul George? No. We'll get it. Three young players... And one guy who is Dylan known as one of the best defender in the NBA. No, Keon Ellis. No, a man Thompson. Uh, no, a Sar Thompson. A Sar Thompson. Yes, My number six. Fucking brother, we're here. Was he? What number is he? Six. That's so beautiful to see. That's pretty great. Um, we got no Celtic on here. No Celtics. Okay. Uh, I'm not shocked. Deuce McBride. No Deuce. OG. OG. Yes, that's the name. Uh, really that's surprise. Like He's that number four. So you're missing two names. These are younger players, um, not big name players, but I think Bilal Kulabali. No. Denny oh. Advia. No. Both oh, great oh. high level guesses. Uh both uh players on bad teams. Oh. Uh uh oh God. Is one of the teams Trey the Jones. Raptors? No. No, no. You said the Raptors, right? Yeah, no. Bad teams in the West or East. No, make it easy. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah come it on. It's just it's uh, it's two bad teams never in playoff contention. Fuck, who are the teams that are different? Uh, Pass the Grizzlies, Spurs, Blazers. Oh, Jaron Jackson. No. Vince G- Williams Jr. Vince Williams, yes. Oh, yeah. Number go. seven. So you're just missing one name. I was surprised this player was on the list. I'll be honest. Devin oh, my. Vassell. Oh, 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 oh. Devin Vassell? No, Devin Vassell. Oh, man. Is this... Dennis Smith Jr. No. Jeremy I was going to say Jeremy Dennis... Sohan. Yeah, Jeremy yes. Sohan. Number four. So the top, He's an elite defender. top eight players in terms of perimeter isolation defense. You got Lou Dort, Alex Caruso, Jeremy Sohan, OG. Jane McDaniels, Sar Thompson, Vince Williams, and Derek Jones Jr. Well, Derek Jones Jr. That's your X fact. I like it because yep. if he can shoot well, it changes the series yeah. for the Mavericks. And he's going to be on Kawhi or Paul George. Yeah, too small for Kawhi, man. Get a grown man out there, man. He's so good they don't on have defense, any. though. I hate that. For that's me. why they got PJ Washington too, baby. Needle mover. Don't forget it. DJ, he's just too skinny. He you is need, skinny, you need, but he's athletic. Yeah, you need you need bulk, you know, because Kawhi hits you with one of these. Yeah. You like, oh shit. Some might say you need girth. Dude you do, girth. yeah, because quiet. You can put on just thirty pounds. And then you try PJ; it's food. Like, what Shannon Sharp had that meal? <laughs> That's right. I got the mac and cheese. I got the cornbread. I got that, the... that team was ass, wasn't it? What the Magic team? Did what you see it or no? What Magic team. The the one oh, with Doc that's Rivers. What I was looking. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what you told me. Over. I think it's a 2001 season. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. 1999, 2000. Yes. Let me see. Let me see. This team was leading scored. In fact, dog shit. Dorrance Armstrong. Daryl. Daryl. Daryl Armstrong. You, yeah, I don't know half these names. Chucky. I know Chucky Atkins. I know Monty Williams. He's on the team. Wow. Him coaching Monty is funny. No, they were trash. That team was pretty. Corey McGetty. Ben Wallace was on this team. What team are you guys looking at? Anthony Park. The first iteration of the Magic team. So he's a guy who can turn whack talent in the playoff teams, and when he gets great talent, he can't win. No, yeah, it's a not an oxymoron for sure. Hate hate that for him. Yeah, yeah. Clippers though, when he first got there. Four straight 51 seasons. They're impressive. Just uh, couldn't get over the hump. Best players they were, I was gonna, No, I was going to say, didn't he coach Blake, yeah. CP? Oh, yeah, yeah those yeah, teams. I was they definitely under cheat. They lost to Josh Smith one They game. were just always hurt. That one year is fair, though. They they choked. They bad. choked. It was bad. 3-1. Yeah, it was yeah they choked. They choked. They choked. It was hilarious, actually. They went on that run without James Harden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the Harden closed it out. When are we recording seven. next? Are we just going to live reactions type shit? I guess Saturday, right? Saturday's a live reaction vibe. Yep. Saturday is the first games of the playoffs. I'm excited. Are you guys round. excited? Are you fucking kidding me, dog? Good Good night, Saturday right night, so not sure. We don't need oh. you. It's Chelsea's oh, yeah. friend's birthday. We don't need you, bro. Okay. Mr. Dells. Whatever. Bro. What did you say about Dells before the show? So I wasn't prepared because I didn't have a like short clip type shit. I did. He did. Nah, Dells is always consistent, though. He can I take am. a break, you know? Why are you taking I, this I have, a, I have a clip at least once a week. Or excuse me, once an episode. No, I have Drew. a clip. Are we getting more and more you, on, are we getting you on Saturday? It's your, it's your birthday weekend, essentially. No, we're going out tomorrow, and that's it. Okay. And I'm going to brunch on Sunday. I saved Saturday for you guys. I will be drunk on Sunday for the live reaction. Can't wait. Sunday? Yeah. What are you doing Sunday? Going to oh, brunch. brunch yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. I have to hold off my excitement for these playoff games. Huh? I don't know yet. Because things don't start getting spicy until like game 34. Yeah. Oh, when you start say. running your mouth. Yep. Mm. 
Got a yeah. good point. Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah, sometimes it pays off, though. Uh, but it's then sometimes it's a catastrophic L. <laughs> catastrophic and then sometimes L. L. When, when did it, when did it pay off? Eliminates them. When well, did it pay off? That's what happens. I picked them in my heart. I wanted them to win. Respect. Yeah. When did it pay off? This year, they beat y'all. They eliminated y'all from... They ended your dynasty. Never wrong. ended your dynasty. Never early. Just early. You didn't pick them, though. I picked them in my heart. I just told Drew. Oh, you Drew believed you? No, 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 no. I respect the fuck out of it. I mean, a real man would have just picked them. I, I should have. I should have. You you're, you're not wrong. You you're should've. not wrong. But they ended the dynasty. Yeah. When they, when fuck they go us back. For, for trusting Steph Curry. That bum. When they go back in the history books, they're going to say the Kings ended the Warriors dynasty. Shout out to them. They'll Yo, never do anything no, good ever again. also crazy? LeBron outlasted the Warriors dynasty. <laughs> I mean, he keeps jumping fucking teams. Uh, he's smart. I'm like yeah, someone I, mean, I know. You keep grabbing other stars. I shit. mean, to be fair, the Warriors won a ring last, not LeBron. That's uh, also true, but we went to WCF last year. That's what I, you really didn't go. We beat you. You did. Said bye, 20 points. See you later. You had a lot of, it was a 15 on five. Sorry. <laughs> if we'll be honest. Yeah. Know. That's going to do it for episode 374. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pod. On Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.